is the Glass Cannon Network. God save the British Empire. Hello, welcome to Friends of the Pod. Wow. This is our playthrough of the <laughs> the laundry, a new game that is being kickstarted from Cubicle Seven. It's going to be absolutely <laughs> mind melting. I am your game master, your handler, if you will. My name is Jared Logan, and with me I have my favorite players. I have Ross Bryant, Abu Salim, Mary Lou, and Josephine McAdam. Hi ho, guys! How are ya? Yeah. Howdy yeah. doody. How, how are you? Deafened. Oh, you're <laughs> deafened. Am I too loud? No, I, I think you're great, man. Uh, it's yeah. called energy. Oh, yeah, energy. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I we, loved we, it. We were, yeah, yeah. We were just blown back like the Maxell tapes guy from the sheer force of your introduction. Wow, the yeah. Maxell tapes guy reference. That is a <laughs> so commercial specific. from 1989. Yeah. This, my boy Ross has deep references, you guys. <laughs> the deepest. Yes. Uh, well, I hope everybody's excited. I was just yelling to get people excited because today we're going to play The Laundry. This is a game, a tabletop role-playing game based on uh, The Laundry Files series by Charles Strauss. Charles Strauss is a Hugo award-winning author. He's written a bunch of novels in this series, and uh, this game is is sort of like a nail-biting horror setting where the apocalypse clock is all always reading like 10 seconds to midnight. I would describe it as um, spies versus Cthulhu, but with a lot of paperwork. Um, <laughs> kind of like a cross between <laughs> Cthulhu, The Office, and Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy is kind wow. of the vibe. Awesome. Um, I definitely check out the novels if you haven't already. I always love it when a game has like a big body of work you can draw inspiration from. I've read, so I've cool. read, yeah, I've read um, the Atrocity Archive, which is the first one. Absolutely excellent. And this game is being kickstarted now by Cubicle Seven. You, you, if you're watching right now, you can uh, go to the link in the chat and you can go to the Kickstarter and help kickstart this game. If you're watching later, just visit the link in the description uh, and go and uh, and donate. And then the laundry will be a game that you can play with your friends. Uh, and uh, and I love kickstarting games. I'm 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 like a. Are you guys big Kickstarter contributors? I am actually. I'm like yeah. a secret Kickstarter contributor, sort of, you know, lover and giver, right? Yeah, yeah. Secret. That's what they call. Them. Yeah, like I just kind of, if I see something that I think is really cool, I'll like give like three thousand pounds to it or something. Right. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's it's weird. Oh, okay, I know. It's yeah, very but... weird. I mean, not like I mean, maybe three thousand is an exaggeration. I'm not that rich, but like maybe maybe if people buy Tales of Kinsera Zao. I'll be able to contribute like three thousand pounds. Uh, I'm, wait, I'm tell us more that. about what is like, that exactly? What are you? It's what a is, great question. Thank you very tell. much for asking. Yeah. yeah, I will. It is a <laughs> video game that I have been working on for four years, and it is selling this month, April, April month, yeah. uh, and it's coming out April twenty third, which is kind of crazy because that's like right next door, and that's terrifying. So um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a Metroidvania, which is all about grief. Uh, but it's actually really fun to play, so it isn't actually that depressing. Um, so it is fun, guys. It is fun, but it's it's really heartfelt too and moving, but also you know really fun. So oh, if, you if you don't it. care about story and you don't care about it's me talking about my dead fun. dad, you can just play some really cool action platforms. But if you do care about my dead dad, then it's a game for you. Uh, I like both of those things. You're, <laughs> yeah, I love video they games can... and your dead dad. Thanks, um, thanks. So you can play uh, the demo, right? Yeah, the demo's available on Steam right. if you want to play. Right. Oh, does well, anybody it's very else? It's very good, guys. And yeah. I'll go ahead, Josephine. Forgive me. Just as she takes a drink, I was just gonna say <laughs> I played the demo. It's it's really good. It's really good, uh, and it did make me want to cry in the first few seconds, and then it was really fun afterwards. And it's just yeah, it's very good. Very good. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to plug? Maybe a hair care product that you've been developing, or uh, a new brand of. Pens. What? 
I don't know, Abu. <laughs> I'm improvising this. Look, the point is, we are here to play the laundry, uh, the laundry, uh, not the laundry files. Oh, the I want to pitch something. I want to yes, pitch go. something. Yes, go. Um, yes. Do you guys remember that TV show, Fringe? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. That, that yeah. was a good show. Yes, and Fringe has a lot that's of DNA pitch. in the laundry in this that's game. What I, that's what I was thinking, and I loved that show. Great, yeah. That's another great reference. Thanks for bringing that up, What's Mary the Lou. pitch? That's, that's yeah. my pitch. Yeah, you guys watch it. It's the really was. good. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> the pitch was watch Fringe, I guess. Yeah. Dry observation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, this game is going to be really fun. I love the world. And uh, I have a pitch, Jared. Um, yes, go ahead. Yes, what's your pitch? Uh, hand soap exists. Um, <laughs> you should right. use it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing to use. Yeah, I have a pitch. Uh, I like turtles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. What so, the fuck? Guys, uh, just remember, you can go and donate to the Kickstarter right now. It's going April 10th through May 1st, I believe. And uh, you should go and donate. And you should play the laundry because this setting is so awesome and fun and funny and weird and cool. And that said, I'm going to talk to my players a little bit about their characters and how the game works. So uh, each of you are playing a role within this British government agency uh, with nicknamed The Laundry. Uh, who deal with occult threats. That is the main uh, mission of the agency that you work for. Um, You also have to deal with a lot of office politics and bureaucracy in addition to dealing with demons and zombies and things that go bump in the night. Things with a capital T. Um, You each have uh, an assignment within the the agency. So could uh, very briefly, you just tell me what your assignment is, and in a little bit we'll learn names and and uh, details and all that, but um, uh, basically this is what in other games would be referred to as your class. Uh, what are you playing, Ross Bryant? Oh gosh, um, I, I'm, I am playing uh, someone who is in the Department of Field Support. And as you, as you mentioned, uh, yeah, dry, bureaucratic um, title. But I think what this really means is that if this organization, the Laundry, needs boots on the ground to actually do some, uh, to tie up loose ends and to get their hands dirty, um, shooting, renditioning, um, and actually being a hood, um, this this is what the field support does. Yeah. You are, uh, you're, you're guns. You have guns. Yep. Yeah. Guns and um, fists. Guns, guns and fists. And fists. Um, Josephine, what is uh, your assignment within the laundry? My assignment is curator acquisitions. I work in the Department of Records. It's very cool, actually. Uh, one of the few I don't games know what that where means. you can I be someone I'm who... Just like- <laughs> where you can play someone who works in the archives. Um... T- I can tell you what it yes. means. Do you really yeah. not know what it means? I can tell you. I mean, I guess it means I work in records. I like, I, I, I know things. I know things. I know what you did. I know what you're up to. You probably do know. have. No, you're right. You probably do have a really good knowledge of the fi- the case files of the laundry. But also remember that this is an apocalyptic horror setting. So you probably have all kinds of things in your archive that man was not meant to know. Old hoary tomes filled with demonic sigils, strange glowing skulls on shelves, brains in jars. You're in charge of cataloging all that and keeping it safe and maybe taking a peek now and then and melting your sanity, okay? So that is what a curator does within the laundry. Mary Lou, what is your assignment in the laundry? My assignment is the medic, both medical and psychological. Um, Yeah, I'm your medic. Uh, Pretty straightforward. Uh, But, you know, you probably (laughs) deal with uh, some strange uh, injuries sometimes. And then, of course, psychological aid is uh, super important in this setting. Um, It doesn't quite have the... um, the sanity mechanic that Call of Cthulhu has, but it has this really cool mechanic where in the same way you can do damage physically, you do the the same mechanic kind of works for doing damage psychologically. And there are 
you know, frightened and terrified conditions and things like that. So uh, super important to both care for the minds and emotions and the bodies. And finally, Abu. Abu was the last one to get to pick his character. And uh, in fact, we I sent out the email to pick your character at 3 a.m. London time. So Abu was deep asleep. Abu, what is your character? What's the assignment? I basically just post my t- opinions on Twitter. Um, that's my job. That's my assignment, <laughs> uh, basically. Uh, no, I'm an IT computer help desk, which is... Yes, that's right, guys. I, <laughs> I work at the help desk. I, I, I'm, I'm an IT nerd. Yep. But, but, see, but see, here's the thing. You think that you just work at an IT computer help desk, but in the laundry, that is a very special and important and terrifying job because here in the modern era, we no longer chant spells and sacrifice goats. We use computers in order to create spell grids and we have microprocessors that calculate the different angles of space-time to summon eldritch entities so in fact computer help desk means that you are in a way a sorcerer of this setting (laughs) that's Um, sick yeah it is sick uh and 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 i will also (laughs) just add that the main character in most of the laundry novels is a IT guy. Um, well, IT you know, guy. I am always number one on the call sheet, so <laughs> it uh, makes a lot of sense. Yes. Okay, yeah. Abu, alphabetical. <laughs> Listen, you, yeah. lot took, you lot took your roles, man. I'll let you take them. This is what I'm saying, right? Just stay Abu. humble. Abu, you have total main character energy. Okay. Thanks. Wow. So we are going to start the scenario. Uh, I will kind of tell you how the rules work as we go. Feel free to stop me and ask questions. But let's go ahead and jump in because uh, enough enough chitter chatter. We'll even learn more about your characters later, like their names later. But right now, I just want to jump in. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. Man of the People is the title of this scenario. You are operatives for The Laundry, Britain's extra secret service specializing in dealing with occult activity, unlicensed sorcery, and computational demonology. That is, using complex mathematical equations to open gateways to other realities, usually through the use of computers, gateways that let things in. You've been working for the Laundry for a short time in your various assignments and have worked together a couple times in simple field operations, so you all know each other. You've worked on surveillance, breaking into corporate servers to remove dangerous coding, that sort of thing. However, the Laundry has been tipped off that a senior party whip, that's a member of parliament, has been researching mind control and occult rituals. And your team has been assembled again to investigate and search the office of Nicholas Mar- Morris, Nicholas Morris, Member of Parliament, as discreetly as you can. So, Act One, on Her Majesty's Suboptimal Service, you find yourselves in Portcullis House. Portcullis House is kind of a modern office block that's sort of across from the Houses of Parliament, because the Houses of Parliament is just a crumbling, leaky, edifice built how many hundred years ago. So uh, in order for the MPs to, you know, kind of do their business, uh, they have offices in this place called Port Cullis House. It's sort of a modern, a modern place. And you are in the office of one of these members of parliament, one of these MPs, Nicholas Morris. You're all dressed and posing as an IT team while Nicholas Morris is at lunch. And you find yourselves looking at his office and um you know you might think being a politician is a uh a luxurious or a prestigious job but uh maybe you've never been to the uk look uh the uh the office is is not at all glamorous or luxurious or prestigious you see a cluttered desk with empty laptop stand and a spin chair You see um, a circular meeting table covered in newspaper clippings. There are filing cupboards everywhere crammed with stuff. Like you see like bits of magazine and, you know, folders sticking out of them. 
and uh, there are boxes and boxes of files. And in a corner, you see a, a, a coffee mug just growing coffee mold. So you are here. You have to find some evidence, some clues about Nicholas Morris trying to research occult mind control techniques. You all have your little IT team badges. You're in disguise. He's at lunch. What do you do? Mm, I want to go through any files and things. Okay. I, papers, papers. I, I, yeah, yeah. I want to find all the papers and I want to be going through them. Um, you have your choice of, there's so many papers. Do you want to look through the boxes of files or would you like to look through the uh, filing cupboard? The filing cupboard, yeah. Okay. Great, so let's go over how a roll works in the laundry, <laughs> all right? You have three attributes, mind, body, and spirit, and then you have a number of skills, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so um, for this test, you are going to roll a mind awareness roll. So that means you take the number of dice you have in your mind uh, rating. What is your the number you have for mind? I've got a three in mind. Okay. So take three six-sided dice. This game only uses six-sided dice. Take three uh, dice for mind. And then how many dice do you have? How many, what's your number for awareness? I have a, a training box ticked in awareness. Okay, that means that you have a one in awareness. Um, okay, You have a, your training, so. thank you. Your training is, is how they refer to it, is one. So that's a total of four six-sided dice. Do you okay. have focus in awareness? Do you have focus? No, I don't have focus in awareness. Okay, no problem. So your character runs up to the filing cabinet, pulls it open. I mean, stuff is literally spilling out of it. And you may now roll your four six-sided dice. The difficulty is four, one. That means that you need to roll four or higher on the dice, and you need to get at least one four to succeed. Does that okay. make sense? Mm. Yes, it could it also does. be five, two, which meant you right. had to write, roll five or higher and you need two successes. But it's Got four, it. one right now. Got it. All right. Um, I got four successes. <laughs> four successes. Oh, oh. my God. Um, so um, you are digging through these files, and um, <laughs> you're good at files because you're the curator, right? And, 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 this uh, is what I do, and this um, is my yes. voice now. <laughs> <laughs> so in these files, you find um, uh, a lot of data research on the impact of recent cuts on poverty hotspots. Mm -hmm. You find a heavily annotated copy of the book, The Men Who Stare at Goats. Mm -hmm. You find uh, freedom of information requests about goats, psychic war warfare, specifically MK Ultra, magazines of the weird, like the Fortean Times, and a magazine called Classic Tractors. I don't know why that's in there. <laughs> and then more freedom of information requests about other weird stuff. And then, because you rolled four successes, you also find freedom of information requests requesting information about the freedom of information requests <laughs> that this guy already made. God damn. Okay. But, how many times are goats mentioned? Like, how often do goats come up? Um, just twice. Just the just book, twice. The Men Who Stare at Goats, uh, which, uh, if, you, if, you, if your character's not familiar, a cursory inspection shows you that it is, it is about uh, a, a United States um, agency detail in the military that used psychic powers, psychic phenomenon, or tried to, purported to. Um, what is everybody else doing? Um, I wanna, uh, oh, please. I want to look at um, that cup of coffee. Uh, yes. Because mold growing out of it, just in the open, like how long has it been there? I don't know. Okay, great, no problem. Um, you can walk up to the cup of coffee and take a look. Um, what skill, uh, I'm sorry, what, yeah, what, what training and attribute should we use? Mind awareness again, do you think that's fair? Uh, yeah, I wanna look for clues, I think with, uh, with mind um, and awareness. I have a point, one point in awareness, but I also have a talent 
that is curiouser and curiouser, when looking for clues, the difficulty is reduced by one. Ah, very good. So for you, this roll will be uh, mind awareness three one. So you only get need to get a three or higher. Okay. What is your uh, mind attribute? My mind attribute is three. And what is your awareness? One. Okay, so you're rolling four dice as well. You need a three or higher. You only need to roll one dice, three or higher to succeed. So that's what the talents do. They decrease the difficulty. Talents do all kinds of things. Okay. Um, uh, uh, sometimes even combat related stuff. They're, they're kind of special powers that each of the characters have, but Mary Lou has one that decreases difficulty on investigating things. Yeah, uh, and I rolled four successes. Four successes again. Yeah. Well, right, yeah. what you find uh, is uh, what you uh, consider to be normal, everyday, old coffee mold. Uh, and you also <laughs> find an empty uh, container that looks like it contained a kebab at one point. Um, there is um, a lot of detritus from meals eaten in the office. Uh, like a lot of MPs, this guy keeps long hours. It's all really gross. And perhaps the strangest thing you find, is this incriminating, is a brazier, a Ooh. woman's brazier underneath some old food containers and things like that. <laughs> curiouser and curiouser. That is curious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, Abu, what would your character like to do? So I assume that there's like a computer here or some form of like, you know, <laughs> monitor or screen or even a laptop maybe. I mean, I don't know if he's taking it with him or... Is there anything yeah, of that sort? Yeah, you know, there's a laptop stand, but no laptop here. Interesting. Oh my God. However. You don't have desktops? However, this is the government. However, <laughs> like like... is there a router here or some form of internet connection? Absolutely, yes, there is. Great, I'm going to plug into their, um, their sort of their, and I don't know whether this will work, but I'm gonna just fucking pretend it because it's, it's, it's the laundry. Oh, this is great. Um, I always love in a game where people expect us to know how computers work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, my understanding of computers is like a uh, Disney movie. Like you can, <laughs> you can j go ahead. I want to see what you're going to try to do. So I'm going to connect to their internet. <laughs> I'm going to then figure out what their IP address is or the IP address of this area or wherever it is. Um, I'm going to try and find the profiles of whatever is logged into this IP address, and I'm going to see if I can access any information of maybe the, you know, the, 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 let's say the computer that has, you know, kind of used the IP address as, as a, as a, um, you know, as, as what it is and whatever, and try and remote access it essentially, and try and find some valuable information that way. Okay. So you're, you're trying to see uh, where this, using the IP address, where the computer has gone recently? Yeah, where it's gone, where, where but it's also be able online? to- Yeah, essentially just try and like hack into them by, you know, by essentially finding the profile that was attached to the actual IP address. Again, I might be making this shit up, but hey, this is, this is the, the internet. So um, the idea is essentially, yeah, I'm going to find the profile that was on the, that was last on this IP address, which I would assume is going to be his, and I'm going to basically remote hack into his computer. I am going to allow this because I don't know if it's possible. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am going to have you. Um, uh, you're basically going to see maybe where this IP address has visited, right? Uh, mm. Re mm. Recently. Um, mm. So. Would you please give me a mind computers mm -hmm. role? I'm gonna call the difficulty four, but the complexity is gonna be two. You need two successes for this to work. Okay, so that's three minds. Um, uh, I've got three mind and one computer with two training. So, okay. Um, Wait, if you, I use... two, you, had, you should have probably have more computer than that. I think you might be have at least two, right? You are the IT oh, guy. Well, I got two check, two checked on my computer. That means you get a two. That means your, okay. your training is two. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to actually use tech savvy, which is when operating or repairing electronic tech, double the number of die gained from training. So that's essentially four, that's seven yeah, dice. Yeah, that's wow. seven oh, dice. That's good. seven dice. Wow, yeah, that's, that's great. Let's roll seven die. Locally, so, locally. Um, let's see how this works. I should have made the difficulty higher. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. Don't worry about it, man. Um, here we go. Yeah, seven. don't worry about it. 
Right, you ready? Yes, I'm I ready. Got one and one, two, three, four, five, five successes. Five successes is a lot of successes. You, um, let's say on your whatever mobile device you're using to do this, get a big, long history of different sites that this guy has visited, and it is not something that you can at cursory glance analyze. You will have to take it back and look at it unless you want to take, I mean, an hour or two in here right now. But uh, he's at lunch, and who knows when he's going to come back. Yeah, I'm gonna. I would have. I would have said I would have used my laptop. I carry my laptop with me everywhere Done. I go, so mm -hmm. I would have used my laptop. So I'm gonna park myself in a dark corner and begin trying to break this thing down, so everyone can do their own thing while I kind of cower like. Ooh, if I if I help, could I cut down that time it would take? Um. Yeah, uh, well, maybe. I want right now. I want to see what R uh, Ross's character is doing. Okay. Um. Well, these nerds are doing whatever it is they're doing. Um. Just looking at a. Uh, everybody kind of springing into action, doing their tech stuff. Um. <laughs> um. Rifling through files, inspecting molds, and tapping away at keyboards. Um. <laughs> I think the the um, button down tech uh, shirt is almost like about to burst uh, <laughs> due to the strain that the uh, pectorals of this guy is oh putting on God. it. Um, the buttons are about to fly across the room, and um, he's more interested in making sure that they're not discovered. He's here as as muscle protection. So if there's a way to kind of like glance down the hallway, he's, he's standing by the door, making sure that no one's going to bust in on them unawares. Um, but if, if I feel relatively secure, I just want to take a cursory glance at all those newspaper clippings all over that circular table you mentioned. Ah, very good. Yes, the newspaper clippings. So looking at the newspaper clippings, you see a lot. Uh, he's been collecting headlines on himself, uh, mm. articles about himself. And a lot of them repeat over and over, well, one in the headline, the country can't wait. This guy is calling for a new general election because he thinks the current party in power is completely failing uh, in every conceivable way. And there needs to be a new government in the UK immediately. And I'm so, to understand um, that this, this, this guy is um, the whip for the opposition party. That's correct. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, uh, and so um, that is what you find there. And then you said you were kind of keeping an eye out to make sure uh, everybody is. Yeah, every everything is OK in terms of. Yeah. OK. Give me a mind awareness roll. OK, great. Um, we'll call it four one as well. OK, great. Um, I've got a two mind one aware awareness, but I am focused in awareness. So what does that mean? Focused means. However many points of focus you have, you can add those points on a one-for-one -one basis to your dice roll results. So let's say the difficulty is four and you roll a three, you could take a point of focus and turn that three into a four and it becomes a success. Okay, great. Oh, cool. Um, okay, I'll, I'll do just that. I got two successes. Okay, very good. So you are kind of keeping an eye out our curator is walking over to our IT guy to try to assist him, like collating and uh, analyzing this data he just got from the router. And as you were doing that, you see a portly man in an anorak with a mustache and glasses, bald headed, uh, red faced, huffing, double timing it toward the office as fast as he can. <laughs> look alive, look alive. Um. What's um and is this? Do do I, Nicholas Morris is the name of the person we're investigating, right? Yes. Is this the same fellow? This is not Nicholas Morris, um, but uh, you hear the man's voice and you suddenly recognize the voice because you've heard him before in like your earpiece. Mm. This is Algernon Mainwaring. Great. And he's going abort, abort! They're coming! Abort, abort! They know you're here! <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I might just like well, pop right out then. the door. Like, he comes crashing into the room. <gasps> Abort! <gasps> oh! Well, Algernon, don't, you keep your don't voice get down. upset. <laughs> don't have a conniption. All right, let's just go then. Um, what's everybody gonna do? Let's. I'm let's just go. tapping away. Yeah. Don't, come on, let's let's pack it up. We we can bring it and we can look at it later. I'm gonna so pack close. up my brazier, the brazier that I found, my found brazier. You said my brazier. My brazier. Well, I've got mine, but then I my other brazier, uh, and and scoot. Oh. Yeah, are there any f- files I can just grab that I think won't be missed? Um. You know, there are so many here, and they're so disorganized. Certainly, yeah. you could scoop up a pile of them. Would you like to do that? Sure. All right, you were the one that said, let's go first. and you're the, So you scoop up a pile of files. You push past Algernon out into the hallway, turn, and here you are red-handed with a pile of files. And you were looking at Nicholas Morris, a older gentleman in what looks like a military uniform, and 12 security guards. <laughs> well, well, hello. Um, I was just sent by the um, d- Department uh, of... Uh, yeah, now, what is this? Here at, at, well, it's just uh, due diligence. This is uh, a routine examination that we've been doing of every every uh, member's office. Uh, as you see, there was an appointment time uh, scheduled directly as with your assistant. And if you don't know anything about it, you should probably speak to your personal sec- secretary about it. <laughs> I love it. Great. Uh, how are you going to lie? I believe there's a can fast I, can talk I- skill. Yes. Uh, and this can would... I use um, bureaucracy somehow? Oh, I in love this? that. Knowing I love that. Yeah. I have a, a, a talent for red tape. <laughs> I I think that that is uh, that's very interesting. What does your talent for red tape read? This says when working laundry bureaucracy, double the number of dice in your training for bureaucracy. Okay. Okay. Um. I'm going to allow that, but I'm going to make this a tough roll. I'm going to make this a five, okay. a five, three roll. Ooh, okay. And am I using mind here? Um, you mind are going bureaucracy? to use, no, no, you'll use spirit because okay. you're trying to convince okay. someone of something. Okay. Spirit, my spirit is three. I've got one tick in bureaucracy, so I'm going to add an extra because of red tape. And I also have a focus in bureaucracy. So let's see how this. Nice. Okay, five, six. Hold on, one more die. Come on. Oh no! How many did I need? You needed three. I got two. <laughs> uh, the brigadier. Come on, Jared. The brigadier says, <laughs> "Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! How dare you? What in the devil is the meaning of this? Who do you work oh. for?" Oh, oh, and I turn to Ross. What's your character's name? <laughs> uh, uh, Bill Baraclaw. Bill Baraclaw? <laughs> Baraclaw. B A R R A C L O U G H. Baraclaw. Okay, I go. I, I look with like wide eyes towards you and go, Mr. Baraclaw, and then I go running away. <laughs> uh,. uh Get her! And a bunch of uh, the security detail runs after uh, our curator, and the brigadier is just going off. He's saying, this is England. You can't ransack the offices of a member of Her Majesty's Parliament. This isn't France. Uh, (laughs) And he is, uh, he's actually pulling his firearm. (laughs) He shouldn't do that. And he's going, who sent you? Who sent you? I demand to know. Um, so anybody I'm, else have I, anything they want to say? Well, I'm I, okay. How how much time has passed? Because I'm still in the corner, in like a dark corner, tapping away at my keyboard. Like uh, no, like uh, just <laughs> you okay. know, a, a, not a minute has passed. Not a minute. Uh, what? It didn't okay. take us a minute to do that last roll. <laughs> I'm still I'm still <laughs> tapping away. I'm like, <laughs> all right. I'm gonna try to throw myself between the people coming into this room and. And my my friends to just try to stonewall them for a second to give um, Abu. What's your character's name? Uh, my character's name is Clive. Clive X. Love as it. an E X. 
Love it. Clive X. Um, um, a weird last name like X is totally appropriate because, of course, in the laundry, you use pseudonyms. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh. Hmm. Um, then, yeah, uh, can I just try to plant myself like a physical barrier between the the brigadier and and the office? Yes, you can. So you're trying to... Uh, basically, the brigadier says, Stop that man! And he's pointing at... Uh, our uh, IT help desk uh, agent. Mm. Uh, and so the security detail tries to push in. And how are you stopping them from getting to <clears throat> your your fellow agent? I, well, you tell me how this would work. I'm just like, kind of almost like, just turn myself into a statue in that doorway um, while saying something to the effect of like, um, information technology told us to come down here. We had to... There's a there's a virus, don't you understand? And it's rather time sensitive. So unless you want all the computers to be compromised, you need to let these people do their work. Very good. Give me a close combat roll, a body close combat roll. We are not going to enter a full combat right now. Um, okay. But we will go into close combat. I'll also mention one other thing because it feels like it's appropriate to this particular role. Each of you has adrenaline. You have an adrenaline score. I'll say. Your adrenaline are points that you can spend to gain an extra action if you are in combat, double the number of dice you roll for a skill, or double your focus for a skill. Huh. Um, and you'll get adrenaline back when exciting things happen, like uh, when you take the, I think when you take like the frightened or terrified condition, you get some adrenaline back, things like that. Okay. Um, Good to know. So, uh, body close combat. Yeah, why not? Love it. And do, what's my what's the the um, what I have to um, be? Let's see. There are the only three security officers ran after our curator, so that leaves us with uh, nine. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, only six could try to push through the door at one time. So why don't we make the difficulty six and? Um, Let's make the uh, the complexity half that. Six, three. Oh, my lord. Well, that's a failure. How, what did you get? Um, zero successes. I rolled uh, <laughs> five dice, but didn't clear five on any of them. Four is my highest roll. Uh, oh, amazing. Right. Um, okay, so... Um, your your field your field support <laughs> steps into the breach to try to stop them. I mean, six guys immediately clobber him. They've got him on the ground. A taser is coming out. <laughs> it's not pretty. Um, uh, and so what's the field support <laughs> stance? I, all right, this is where I'm gonna p peek up and I'd be like, I'd let go of him if I were you. You're making a terrible mistake. I, 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 I seriously would let go of him if I were you because um, you don't know what I can do here. Um, uh, Nicholas Morris looks at the brigadier and goes, and just what is it that you can do? Here, let me show you. And I'm going to summon an eldritch being. <laughs> 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 All right. So Abu thinks we're playing Blades in the Dark. <laughs> it's a, it's a, Listen, man, you said eldritch. So I'm like, all right, cool. It's an all-purpose solution. Yeah. Or, or, or how about this? Then? How about this? Do you Can have I a do... demonic summoning grid program on you? Well, this is it. I, I've got my laptop on me. So I assume that maybe rather than necessarily um, summon an <laughs> eldritch being, maybe could I potentially, I don't know, give some form of tech energy or augmentation to the field operative to kind of, you know, almost like, you know, kind of boost him up. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe we're like, you know, there's, there is a way of kind of kind of <laughs> implanting something or summoning something into him that kind of gives him an upgrade. Okay. I love where your mind is going, but this is the laundry. There are certain uh, procedures. There are okay. certain uh, steps that must be followed, equipment that must be requisitioned, forms <laughs> that must be filled out. You need a certain clearance to do the kind of thing that you're asking to do. 
and you're not even armed with an eldritch app on your phone that can <laughs> create such a spell. And therefore, the best you can do is make some sort of strange threat. Would you like to do that? Yes. Okay. What would you like to use to do that? Uh, I would think that it would be a spirit and then can a I? fast talk, or I will even accept an occult. Yes, uh, Mary Lou. I would like to assist his threat. Okay. Let me look up how you assist. That's called a well, group. Yes. Yeah. I, well, uh, yeah, by by adding a, a, a bit to his to, to his story that he's making here. <laughs> Okay, uh, yes, so it's gonna be a uh, group test. Uh, you're both gonna roll, um, and I'm going to say that you need four successes to convince these people that you're able to summon a demon to destroy them. And uh, is, is that what you're threatening exactly? Sort of, uh, Abu, is that correct? Yeah. Sort of what you're threatening? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you need four <laughs> successes, and you can both roll uh, a spirit, Fast talk or spirit occult to do that? Okay, I'm gonna do. I don't have any of those. I've got oh, three but spirits because you and don't one actually occult. have because none of them actually know exactly what you're talking about, and none of them, and you don't have any of the proper equipment to do this. It's going to be at disadvantage, meaning that you are gonna have negative one die to your roll. I wanted mm. to suggest that we adjust the pitch a little bit, or the, n not the pitch, the threat. Um, okay. Uh, and and maybe I can use my intuition, perhaps, which is something I do have something in, to see if this is hitting close to home for Nicholas Morris. Or do you want to use your intuition in the group role to scare them? Is that what you're pitching? Yes, because what I w <laughs> instead of threatening that there's gonna, like a demon or an eldritch being, I I want to hold up the brazier and um, and say uh, yes. My friend here has a, has a line to the direct public. He can stream this instantly. Is there something you want out in the public? Okay, so it sounds like two separate roles. One person's trying to scare everybody about a demon and the other person's trying to blackmail someone with a bra. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so please make uh, a spirit occult role, Abu, and please make a uh, let's see. I don't know that that's an occult roll. I mean, it's definitely not an occult roll. I don't know that it's fast talk either. Okay. What do we think this is? Um. And this is at dis, right? What's that? This is at disadvantage, right? It will be at disadvantage. Uh, okay. And um, I'm going to give it resolve for you, Mary Lou. Your character okay. needs to seem very serious about blackmailing in order for this to work. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to call it a difficulty five, and each of you needs two successes. Two successes. Okay, so that's three die. Um, can I do any... Spirit. With talent, you can't do... You can't continually use talent all the time, right? I believe that you can. They apply each time the situation comes up. Oh, cool. Okay. So then... For I example, then... Uh, our friend Ross, his character, um, uh, it's Baraclaw, right? That's right. Uh, Mr. Baraclaw has combat ready, plus two to initiative, never surprised in combat. That happens every time he goes into combat. So okay. talents, uh, many of them are in a way reusable or apply any time okay. the situation comes up. Oh what? shit! I, I, okay, never mind. Don't worry about it. Um, All right, let me see those rolls, guys. Let's get to the rolls. I got two successes, a six and a five. Okay, great. How'd you do? I only got one success. Okay. A five. Um, so uh, everybody starts pulling uh, our curator. Uh, we've already captured our our field support, uh, but everybody draws guns and is terrified of our <laughs> IT support guy. They actually think Nicholas Morris, maybe he's the one that knows a little bit about the occult. He's like, everyone stand back. He can do it. I've heard of this. We have to intone some sort of ward. Um, uh, and then he starts like making the sign of the cross, although he's obviously never done it. Um, okay, he's not Catholic. Um, and so I'd like to end the scene now, but because 
Abu, because you succeeded in your role, how would you like the scene to end? Um, and, I'm, and listen, I'm not gonna just give you carte blanche, but I'm gonna give you <laughs> I'm gonna give you some of what you ask for right now because you succeeded in your role. I think I think it ends with essentially them just backing away in fear, away from me, and okay. allowing you know there is a sense of like I can just continue what I'm doing, you know. Okay, great. Um, uh, uh, what I will allow is you, you are, they, they are scared of you, so you get out with the data that you have collected. Okay? okay. Great. Everybody else, uh, they catch you, curator. You don't have a really high <laughs> score. In it. What's your athletics score? <laughs> I, I don't have athletics, but I have other means. Yeah, the security personnel have athletics and they catch you. And once you've all been rounded up and taken to a nondescript basement room here in Portcullis House, one of the security detail comes in and uh, in a conspiratorial uh, nod shows you his warrant card showing that he is also connected to the laundry. Oh. And he says, they're going to need to see you back at the new annex right away. Which is, of course, the place uh, where you all work out of. Um, it's sort of uh, over a uh, disused uh, department store. Uh, it is the offices of the laundry. And it is uh, also uh, logically where our friend, our IT help desk personnel would return to with his data. And uh, when you return, the shit hits the fan. Ross Bryant, would you please yep. roll 3d6 for me? Okay. Oh my God. Um, here we go. I rolled so much one. suspense. I rolled a one, a six, and a one. Okay. You all are required to attend eight different meetings where you are dressed down by uh. senior staff of the laundry. And I mean, some of them are very early in the morning, and there's a lot like 9 of- Like 9 a.m.? Yes, uh. and you have to- <laughs> Even <laughs> earlier, Mary Lou. And you're what? forced- What? You're forced to fill out a, a mission report uh, several different times, and then you're questioned about the mission report, and then the mission report is returned to you because you left a box empty, and they uh, dress you down, they revoke your warrant cards. <gasps> But perhaps most horrific at all, most horrific of all, they require you to attend a training course in Milton Keynes. Oh, Ugh. God, not Milton Keynes. That's right, Milton, Milton oh, Keynes. Man, no no way, a training man. refresher course. <sighs> One of the ultimate punishments an agent of the laundry can receive. And so... <sighs> On a rainy Wednesday, Dear God. you find yourselves in a brutalist 1980s office block in a multi-purpose room with a bad Keurig coffee maker and sandwiches that are like those kind of tortilla wraps that are always uh. wet with like a lot of lettuce in them. And then maybe it's... It's well, I'm, you're not quite sure what kind of meat is in there or what this dressing is, mm -hmm. and you're all required to attend a retraining course, and that is where we will join Ugh. our party in scene two, or rather act two. Welcome to sunny Milton Keynes. You are in <laughs> there uh, in a circle of uh, fold-out chairs with Algernon, who tried to warn you. He's like, hey, oh, <laughs> well, here we are, huh? Uh, Great job being the eyes in the sky there. You nearly gave us three seconds of warning. <laughs> hey, no problem, you know? I mean, uh, I'm not a field agent myself. Just being sarcastic, you ponce. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah. Good one, mate. Good one. Good one. <sighs> Uh, he just finds th that very funny. He's uh, totally, uh, n nothing hurts his feelings. Um, 
Well, I, I mean, I go, I go to the Keurig machine, hit the button, and it's just coming out like clear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there's someone else in here with you. There is a uh, a woman named Jamie. S- she introduces herself as Jamie Smith, and uh, she's kind of tough looking, uh, she's dark, dark complected, dark hair, and she seems pretty disgruntled to be there. So she doesn't say much. She says, "My name's Jamie." Hi, Jamie. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, when when are we going to get started with t- today's uh, lessons, courses? And that is when your instructor bursts in. All right. <sighs> this woman bursts in. She has a enormous head of hair, and she is dressed to the nines, like she is attending some sort of gala like she uh, but but business but 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 very very well dressed and um you immediately recognize her she was in training with you originally years ago this is melanie rario melanie rario uh and melanie uh walks up to all of you and is like well well, 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 look who it is. My old class from training. It's so great to see you guys again. What have you been up to? Uh, we'll come to that, won't we? <laughs> I've been super busy since we last saw each other, you know. I've been just whizzing about all over the place, all over the world. It's been insane. But all good. Everything's going really well. I'm, I'm two grades up, and I'm in the dev program for the next one, so can't complain. Funny how things work out, isn't it? I mean, uh... Uh, my ratings were consistently higher than the class at training, but I didn't think that that would translate to such a difference in progress between us, you know? But I'll, I'll do my best to help get you guys back on track uh, and inspire you to, you know, uh, I guess follow in my footsteps, huh? So to start with, let's all sit down, everybody get together here, and um, I think it would be fun if we started with some icebreaker questions. So, um, each of you, please give your name, who you are, why you're on the course, why you're taking this course, and then um, something unusual people might not know about you. Now, let's start with you, the big strapping one right there. Mm. <laughs> right. Um, the, na- the name's Bill Barraclaw. Bill Barraclaw. Yeah. You know what we we did our first training module together. No, I remember, but part of this is saying your name, so go ahead. Right. <laughs> and I'm suppose I'm here because there was some uh um, breakdown in tactical communication. I say staring daggers at Algernon. Um And he's just ha- smiling at you. <laughs> we had our, and we had our operation blown when we weren't half finished. Mm, breakdown in communication. Yeah, good communication is so important, isn't it, everybody? It is, isn't it? And now, something we might not know about you, Bill. Uh, some... Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there may be something on your character sheet if you're stumped, uh, but don't f- feel free not to use that if you if you don't want yeah, to. Yeah, I'm curious what's, what's, what's canonical about this guy. Um... Second page has some some ideas. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, um, right. Um, what if you were well, just like, I have a flashlight in my personal. I know, yeah. <laughs> I've got a notebook, a pen, and a mobile phone in my person. <laughs> if I had to, if I had to say what was in my inventory, that would be it. <laughs> All right, not really what I meant by sharing something, but. Thank you, Bill. Okay, let's um, go around the circle. I, I and was a, who's next? Let's talk to our curator. I was a Hello. DJ for a year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank oh, you. That's wonderful. Bill, Still that's talking. so... Thank you. That's Still what talking. I meant. That's excellent. Yeah. Okay, um, and you, miss? Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, miss uh, Violet Black, Black Wolf. Um, um, Violet Black Wolf? Yes, yes. That's Sounds made up. It's my name. 
<laughs> no, it's not made up. Uh, you can see it on my uh, ID right here. Ah, uh, yes, you but your warrant so card has as, been um, revoked. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I uh, suppose I'm here because, um, well, uh, I tried to run again. <laughs> uh, you'd think I would have learned first time, but uh, <laughs> these legs, they don't move in the ways that I wish them to time and again. <laughs> if, yes, you were okay. running from the scene of an illegal search. Yes, go ahead. Uh, well, right. Um, uh, uh, fun fact about me. Hmm. 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 Ah, I've had strange dreams of another world. Seen so many things. Oh, well, isn't that very unique? All Thank you. right. Uh, now let's talk to our gentleman over here. I know that he's a, a tech savvy bro who knows a lot about how to make things work. Tell me about yourself, my friend. I'm, I'm, I'm not a bro. Um, oh, I'm afraid I can't, I can't hear, hear you, you, my friend. I can't hear Hello? Uh, yes. Oh, there we go. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Uh, sorry, I just need to talk a bit louder. Um, <clears throat> nervous. Uh, I'm not a bro. Thank you. Um, I, my, name, my name is Clive X. Um, and yes, I, I'm here because of a breakdown of communication, but we're not really here. None of us are actually here. We're um, we're not here. We're all avatars, <laughs> but that's for another time. Uh, uh, the problem with my avatar right now is that I keep throwing up whenever I see uh, zombie security. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'm not sure I totally understood all of that, Clive. But thank you for sharing it. All right, and now I'm turning over here, and now I'm pointing at you, and that means it's your turn. Go! Hello! I'm <laughs> Rachel Nuffield, or at least my avatar's name is Rachel Nuffield. Um, f I'm, uh, I'm the medic. Uh, fun fact about me, I love dogs. Um, I'm married, and I never graduated medical school. All right, I did say... <laughs> I did say... One fact. I did say one fact. Oh, sorry. Just That's... love to go a little, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, so, uh, and and how unique that you love dogs. I, you know, I you love never, dogs. That's very, uh, yeah. Um, so uh, now let's turn to our friend right here, and please state your name. Uh, yeah. Um, this is uh, Jamie. Her uh, name's Jamie Smith. Um, I'm here because I discharged a firearm in public, which Ooh. wasn't a big deal because I totally know what I'm doing and no one was hurt. And fun fact about me, ah, I joined the Mile High Club on the approach into Redacted and I am an <laughs> effing legend. <clears throat> okay, yeah. All right, inappropriate for this setting uh, to share that, but thank you. Uh, and finally, Algernon, you go. Okay. <laughs> Name's Algernon Mainwaring. Uh, I am here because I tried to rescue these effing legends. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you're welcome, guys. And I'd do it again in a second because I love you. And a fun did fact. Not work. Uh, fun, it didn't work this time. Yeah. True. But. Uh, but I was there, I had you back. And uh, fun fact about me is probably that I have been to every Metallica concert in the mainland UK and nothing else matters. Wow. <sighs> Rock on. <laughs> okay, um, that was fun. So now we know all know each other again uh, and we can move on to computational demonology and uh melanie goes into a supply <laughs> closet and pulls out a tv from the 90s on one of those rolling carts yeah and plugs it in in front of you and it actually has a vcr and uh she pulls out a videotape and says 
the information uh, really hasn't needed an update uh, since uh, VHS. Uh, it's uh, remained essentially the same. So I'm just going to let you watch this video. It's a refresher on computational demonology, which you all should have studied and understood thoroughly before joining the organization. Although I heard that one of you was attempting to summon a demon without a summoning grid during the incident, which I thought couldn't possibly be correct because you should know that that's not actually possible. Anyway, uh, watch the video and uh, take notes. I think taking notes is a good idea. I always take notes. Three grades up. Okay. She pushes the video I kind tape. Of le I lean towards Violet. I'm like, I, 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 I could have summoned a demon because we're avatars. Oh, oh yes, yes. No, I, I, I believe it. I, I, no. I, I do believe it. I, I, I know you do. So, uh, did you? Uh, I, I, <laughs> go ahead. No, go on. Okay. Uh, the the <laughs> video is already on. The video is already droning on. Um, and uh, you all are having to like focus on this, and it's this is what it's saying. While the conventional casting method for most spells uses a computer or other microprocessor and an electrical power source, field officers should be aware that any computational method can be used to draw a do na curve through platonic space, and any power source can be used to invoke the many angled ones. Traditional spellcasting methods <laughs> involve the sorcerer performing the computation by reciting a formula or mnemonic that is isomorphic to the computation and powering the spell with his own will or physical health. Non-physical entities normally require an active summoning grid to maintain their presence in this dimension. In effect, the sorcerer keeps the entity in this world by continuing to power the same summoning that brought it here. And at this point... Excuse me, excuse me, Miss Rario, Miss Rario. She's just looking at her phone. Huh? Miss Rario, if, if, if we fully remember everything that we learned during the, the first training session, is it entirely uh, required? Is there like a test or something that we could just Yes, Violet, it's required. It's required to watch this. Uh, We're here to train, not is there like a Is there like a practical uh, element to the there training? There will be perhaps? a practical element, but first we have to deal with the theoretical elements, okay? Oh. All right. It's just that I don't really do well in like a like a sitting still environment. I feel like you, know? you people don't understand why you're here. You made a big boo boo, okay? And no band aid's gonna cover it up. All right. I'm just gonna go back to the beginning of the video. Oh, oh, While the conventional don't. casting method for most spells uses a computer or other microprocessor <laughs> and electrical power source, <laughs> field officers should be aware. Um, I need a test from everybody. Um, okay. A mind resolve test to stay awake. Oh, it is a difficulty three one resolve test. <laughs> right, mind and resolve. Okay. Okay. Great, it's just three. Three one. Okay. Oh, thank God. Okay, I got one success. Four success. I got, I got two. Three successes. Oh, nice. nice. Oh, Four everybody's successes. I'm used staying to bureaucracy. Awake, and you hear from Jamie. <laughs> and Melanie says, okay, she's asleep and I'm not even going to wake her up. I'm just going to note it down. I'm going to note it down and it's going to matter Please don't later. start it over. Please. Spells can, be e can even be cast with no external signs. If the sorcerer is capable of performing the requisite calculations in his head, never assume the absence of magic. Take a thomic reading if you suspect magical activity. When a spell is disrupted, and there's a lot of like diagrams that don't make sense mm -hmm. of like arrows touching squares and then moving to circles and things like that. When a spell is disrupted, the magical energy has to go somewhere, and this may result in a dangerous and violent discharge or other supernatural phenomena. Unqualified personnel should not attempt to terminate an active spell unless there is no other course of action. Now you may roll a test again to see if you're staying awake. That is a mind resolve test. Three, one. Two successes. Three successes. Three successes. 
Three. How'd you do there, Ross Bryant, a.k.a. Three. Bill Barraclaw? Three successes. Okay, everybody's staying fully awake. And now you're getting to a bunch of steps for when you are uh, operating a spell, okay? And uh, I have to read them all because you have to pay attention during this training session. <sighs> Always right. wear a fully charged personal ward when dealing with active spells. It's worse than Never interrogation touch... resistance training. <laughs> <sighs> Never touch any element of an active spell, including the caster the summoning grid, or any unnaturally glowing objects. Never look into the light. Pay no attention to the voices. Wear non-conductive gloves. A spell may be grounded by creating a connection between the active element and the earth. If a computer or other electronic device is performing the spell, shut down or unplug the device. If no other option is available, then disrupt the focus of the spell by destroying the computation device or incapacitating the operator. Never cross the line of a pentacle or summoning grid. Remember, incomplete pentacles emit tentacles. Uh, and that is when <laughs> Melanie Ririo uh, sets up a sort of uh, grid on the ground. Um, she takes a bunch of wires and like something that looks like a hard drive, uh, like external hard drive out of a closet. And she's fuddling with all these cables and she's using the cables to kind of make a circle on the ground and sort of a pentagram out of wires. And she's connecting them into this hard drive. Uh, and, uh, and then she's plugging that into the wall and she's like, okay, in a moment we will... We will discover how to uh, deal with a uh, basic summoning grid. And then she gets a, um, a call, like you hear her cell phone buzz. And she goes, okay, I have to take this. I have to take this. And uh, she walks out into the hallway and you can hear her loudly yelling about a sofa delivery. <laughs> While that's glad it was important. <laughs> While that's happening, you can hear a sort of a, a very... Um, faint drone coming from the microprocessor and the wiring and uh, the uh, the grid on the floor. Well, Jamie someone says, wants to take it? Is that Jamie says, you know, why are we even sitting here? I mean, this is all, this is all a bunch of shat, right? I mean, like, you know, I read that you don't even have to stay in the course if the instructor is gone for more than 10 minutes. Wait, 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 so let's not read that. <laughs> Where, where did you read I, that? It's in the... It was a book. Or, it was a handbook or something. Look, you guys, there is a really nice pub like a half mile from here. I don't know about you, but I'm not sitting here any longer. I'm going to the pub. And Jamie gets up, takes a step, and the very edge of her boot touches the summoning grid. Uh -oh. And suddenly that faint drone becomes a fairly loud drone. And Jamie goes. And uh, uh. is like shaking and sort of like half, uh, like the, the, the toe is still touching the grid, but the rest of her is kind of half floating in midair. And now her eyes are just whites, but you can see things floating around in the white of her eye. Uh. And Algernon looks at all of you and goes, uh-oh, uh, maybe we should do something. Yes. So, um, right, what do you right. do? What we, just, um, what we just heard in the video, like, um, unplug it. That's what you always do in these situations, right, Clive? Mm -hmm. you got to unplug it and plug it back in. But wait, but wait, uh, they said not to touch any part of an active spell. So how do we touch it if to unplug it? You need, you need, you need gloves. Gloves. gloves is, um, is what you need. Gloves. Let's find gloves. We gotta find gloves. And Algernon starts running around looking for gloves. Uh, uh, alternately, uh, Mr. Barraclaw, you we could incapacitate the operator. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, shoot, shoot her, <laughs> shoot her in the head. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I look at Rachel just like, I don't know if that's uh, quite appropriate. Don't, what? don't shoot, please, don't shoot. Just, All just. Right. Look, okay, I'm looking gloves. for gloves. <laughs> right. Non-conductive gloves. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, great. Give me a uh, luck roll. What the hell do I mean by that? You guys have a resource called luck. You share okay. it as a team. 
Okay. Ooh. You have one point per, per person in the group. So you have four points of luck, okay? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you can spend luck at any time. You have to have your friends agree to let you spend it. Uh, to achieve maximum successes on a test before you roll. You can oh. re-roll as many dice as you like after you roll. You can regain all your adrenaline, or you can cheat death by recovering from a critical injury just by spending a point of luck. Luck is also used to roll sometimes to see if something lucky happens for you. Are there gloves here? Please roll four dice, my friend, uh, my friend Clive, and let's see. Okay. Ooh, six, five, five, six. Ah. Um, Clive, you, um, <laughs> you go digging through like the table where all the lunch stuff is. And for some reason in the, this is the kind of stuff you always find in weird office park, multi-purpose rooms. There are like those tight, uh, latex gloves in one of the cabinets. Amazing. I'm going to put them on. Okay, great. Um, and uh, you are now turning back with your latex gloves, and you can see that Jamie is now going, and like yellow mucus is dripping I'm, from her mouth, and she is sort of like reaching out and like, I'm, I'm, like trying to grab people on the edge of the summoning grid. Uh, I'm going to then try and discon, I'm gonna try and grab Jamie and pull them back. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, ooh. Yes. Did you have? Oh, you're just going ooh because it's scary. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just going uh, ooh. <laughs> Sorry. That's a oop. No problem at all. Hello? Um, I need a I need a close combat roll from you, my IT field support. <laughs> oh God. Um, body close combat. So I've got nothing in close combat, but I've got one in body. Mm -hmm. uh, would That's you like good. to roll one die? Yep, let's do it. This is a uh, difficulty, uh, well, let's see, actually. Let's go a little bit with how the uh, a combat works. It's just gonna be a combat between you and Jamie, okay? We don't need to get everybody else involved. And we're not gonna do a full combat, but I kinda wanna show off a little bit of how the combat stuff works in this game, because it's kinda cool. So what is your melee rating? And I can actually tell you. Uh, also how do I how do I see that? So I've got is, combat here. Melee rating is poor. Your melee rating is <laughs> poor. Right, exactly. And uh, let's see. Jamie's current melee rating uh, is um, it is actually average right now. Okay. okay. So this is going to affect the difficulty of your roll. Anytime you make an attack in the laundry, you compare the melee ratings or the accuracy ratings if you were using ranged attacks. Okay. So, um, oh, but you know what? It's actually not melee versus melee. It's your melee poor versus her defense, which is currently average. So okay. she is still a step above Ooh. you. Ooh. So okay. we use something called the ladder. And the ladder so the tells us. You know. Yeah, okay. So, but, um, so from what from what you said earlier, though, Abu could theoretically spend a luck to just succeed on this. That's correct. Yes, your melee or accuracy is one step lower than the target's defense in this case. Jesus. So your so difficulty the... number is five. Five. So it's a, and you have one die. A, and you have one die. The thing about me, and Mary Lou, though, you have to understand is when I roll die, I roll fives. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I just rolled a five. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I just rolled a five. Uh, the Salim <laughs> touch, baby. It's true. Always. Five X, five X with his latex gloves on, reaches out, grabs zombie Jamie, yanks her out of the summoning circle. Pow, pop, pop, pop. Uh, some sparks shoot up out of the summoning circle as Jamie falls into all the folding chairs, scattering them. Uh, and Algernon goes, go, and then you look, and Jamie looks up at you, and she has normal brown eyes again, and she's and, like, and I throw up because I don't <laughs> like zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, what the hell, man? Um, and now there is uh, there's vomit all over the floor, and now it's time for lunch, uh, <laughs> and in fact. 
it's time for us to take a brief break. So <laughs> we will be right back with more of the laundry in just a couple minutes. See you in a sec. Welcome to the government's occult espionage agency, known to its operatives as the Laundry. As a new member of staff, you will be assigned to one of many functional staff branches, including research and development, IT, logistics, or counter-possession. Do not worry, you have a job for life, or even longer, thanks to residual human resources. You will work as part of a cross-disciplinary team to undertake vital missions, retrieve mysterious artifacts, halt extra-dimensional incursions, and face... Your best efforts are expected, and accomplishing your targets will result in additional rewards and benefits. To aid you on your assignments, you will have access to the latest in defense equipment, banishment rounds for your personal weapon, a hand of glory, as well as the latest in personal communications and computing technology. Remember, when the operation is complete, it is vital to file Form R70 and return all equipment undamaged. You are the country's only protection against unlicensed sorcery, dangerous cults, accidental possession, extraplanar incursions, and the mind-melting threats we must face as we prepare for the inevitable Case Nightmare Green. Welcome to The Laundry. The Laundry role-playing game from Cubicle 7. Welcome back to The Laundry. Friends of the pod, here at the Glass Cannon Network, we are playing The Laundry, a new game that is being uh, kickstarted by the craftsmen over at Cubicle 7 Games. The Laundry, based on the novels by Charles Strauss. Guys, this game, I think you can already tell, is such, such fun. Um, we are in an ap apocalyptic horror setting, 10 minutes from midnight, 10 seconds from midnight, but uh, we're also in a corporate training course. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's an interesting cocktail. We're having a lot of fun. If uh, if you feel moved to uh, support the Kickstarter, you can go to uh, the link in the chat if you're watching live right now, or you can visit the link in the description if you're watching later. You can go. You can you can donate to the Kickstarter. That Kickstarter is going on to May first. Check out this game. Uh, all right, we are back, and our agents of the laundry just handled their computational demonology course, and now everybody <laughs> is having the catered lunch here in Milton Keynes. And uh, do you guys, do you go for one of the wraps, or do you go for one of the crescent egg sandwiches that have been provided? Crescent egg. I have a Definitely feeling this will egg. be very important yeah. later. Um, yeah. Crescent I, I, egg, for sure. That's Crescent yeah. egg. I'm okay. all it. All in not on about, egg. not about to trust tortillas in the UK. Yeah, not damp tortilla. Mm -mm. Okay, so uh, oddly, these crescent egg sandwiches are somehow really dry, uh, and it's like, how did they get eggs to be dry? But um, just extremely dry, and and then the tannoy over your heads crackles like, <clears throat> please report to your next uh, station, uh, and you are all shuffled into another room that is set up a little bit like, uh, well, it's a classroom. Um, and there is an old man uh, in a lab coat with a uh, shock of gray hair that looks like it's about to topple over uh, and a kind of a glassy <laughs> stare where it doesn't look like he quite sees all of you. And on a table in front of him are some smartphones. There is what looks like a big camera or it looks like a cross between like a camera and like a megaphone or some kind of electronic gun <laughs> and then there are uh, a bunch of pigeon feet <coughs> severed what? pigeon feet oh right uh and uh, Rachel's this... very interested in the pigeon feet <laughs> <laughs> well 
she'll have a, an opportunity to find out all about them. Uh, of course, uh, you are in a corporate uh, refresher course, so you get this kind of instructor. He just kind of starts talking like he was already having the thought before <laughs> any before mm -hmm. saying hello or before any kind of introduction. He just starts saying, well, of course, these days no one learns magic by memorizing spells. And of course, there is um, uh, an excellent reason for this. Spells never make any sense, uh, literally. Um, magic does not work according to any of the laws or principles that we are familiar with in our daily lives. The simplest and safest way to use magic is by requisitioning a magical device from ourselves here at Q Division. And this is your Q Division course. Now, of course, everything you see here requires COWEU2 training. That's a certification of weaponry expertise on conventional level two training. For those of you forgetful of your acronyms. Anyway, magical devices always work, at least if they are interacted with and properly activated. Uh, they may break or they may be overloaded with powerful magic, but they do not fail and they do not backfire. Thus, there's no harm in giving you a few practical demonstrations. What would you like to see first? He um, gestures to the table. What would you look, like to look into first? I, I saw you eye in those, those pigeon legs. Yeah, can you make uh, them dance? <laughs> ah, you're looking at our hogs. Oh, hogs. Ah, still forgetful of your acronyms. A uh, hand yeah. of glory. A hand of glory. Uh, in the past, these were made with actual severed human hands, but uh, due to supply chain issues, we now use pigeon feet uh, to create a hand of glory. Each hand of glory is activated by a command word that's usually scrawled here into the base of the hand of glory. When you activate the word, the hand or foot will ignite and it will render you... Uh, functionally invisible. Um, well, uh, that is unnoticeable. Uh, that is to say, no one will notice you. Um, oh, would anybody like we to going, try it? I thought we were going uh, to be like dissecting or something. No dissecting. Well, they've already uh, they've sort of already been dissected. I oh, all right. I, wouldn't, I, I guess I wouldn't, I'll try. I wouldn't recommend cutting into a hand of glory. I can tell you that much. No, of course not. That would be insane. Yes. Um, all right, Why? I'll try it. Um, I, there are powerful occult forces at work, um, and uh, you could release um, eldritch, uh, many-angled <laughs> energies that could consume your soul. Here you go, miss. What's your name? Uh, I'm Rachel. That. Rachel. <laughs> Rachel Nuffield. <laughs> all right, Rachel, hold the hog up uh, aloft and uh, say the command... Hog. Yes, there's your hog, and now say the command word at its base. Uh, can I read it? What does it say? It says, uh, uh, only you can read it. Tell me what oh. the command word says. Oh, uh, only I can read it. It says, um, Excalibur. <laughs> the second Rachel says Excalibur, suddenly each toe of the hog suddenly ignites into like a little flame, and suddenly um, you guys are extremely uninterested in Rachel. It's not um. that she's gone. It's just that <laughs> who cares that she's there? Mm -hmm. um, oh, actually, no. first, <laughs> is it working? <laughs> um, um, Excuse me. Is it working? Sorry, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Algernon sorry. is like, can we move on to the next thing? Because um, yes, uh, could I? Could I have one of those? Um, um, one of those hogs, uh, please. The the professor type uh, man uh, uh, who has a name, but he hasn't shared it. Uh, mm -hmm. Says um. Well, I suppose if you'd like to try it as well, there you go. Thank you. Yes, Miss. I want to. Um, um, I want to blow out my hog like a birthday candle. Oh. <laughs> okay, you are trying to blow it out, and it is not <laughs> unigniting. <laughs> I would. I would. I would Excuse like me? one too, please. Um, uh, How do I turn it off? Can he anybody hands tell one me? to you. No one is paying attention to uh, Rachel. Hello. <laughs> I, t I take I take the hog and I hold it in my hand for like a beat until he gets distracted. Then I'm gonna pocket it. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just taking it. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, uh, 
Uh, you guys are gonna pocket it. Okay, um, this guy is so old and so like absent-minded that he doesn't seem to notice that <laughs> at all. Great. Uh, and I guess I'll just put mine down on the table and go, excuse me. Does that uh, work if I if I put it down? Yeah, it does. And the table immediately catches fire. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Oh, dear. Oh, oh dear. Uh, oh. Um, uh, be very careful with these hogs, okay? Sure. They are on fire. It is oh. uh, actual fire. Okay. Rachel, sorry. why if you needed something, why didn't you say something? I was trying, but nobody was listening to me. I'm, I'm sorry, M- M- Miss Nuffield. I'm sorry. You just were dreadfully uninteresting for a bit. Oh, oh, that. I've never Where'd you that come one from, before. Nuffield? <laughs> Look, look we could stand here playing with one another's hogs all day, but I would like to um I'd like to see that light gun. Or whatever it is. Ah, yes. I only um, played with my own hog, thank you very much. Uh, I'm afraid that I'm not no going arm to in be, that. I'm afraid, my young friend, that I'm not going to be able to allow you to try this device. This is a basilisk camera. Hmm. It operates on the principle of electronic gorgonism. Of course, the maps of gorgons were, uh, were uh, the brains of gorgons were mapped in the 1980s, allowing us to <laughs> apply the principle of their petrifying stare to an electronic device. Um, in fact, uh, few people know this uh, if they're not uh, privy to uh, classified information that belongs to the laundry. But every CCTV camera in Britain is actually outfitted with a basilisk camera uh, that can be activated uh, in the event of having to implement Operation Scorpion Stare. But what does it do? Of course, you're asking. The uh, basilisk camera, uh, when it it, uh, shines on you, uh, converts um, a small percentage of your atoms from organic matter to silicate. Um, it is a dashingly small percentage, 0.01% of your atoms, but that is enough to leave you a charred husk of dead inert matter. Would you all like to see a video? Uh, um, that's yes. all right. You've, um, you've explained, you've painted such a picture in words. I don't think I need to uh, uh, see it represented in a 20-year-old video program. Are you sure we can't try it, though? Yeah, do we have any, like, convicted prisoners or anything like that? I'm afraid um, we are not... No death uh, row inmates or anything? Yes. No, this isn't a black site. We can't uh, simply <laughs> execute a prisoner right now. Uh, so uh, Right now, but maybe important. later. Nobody touch the basilisk camera, right? All right. All right. right. Okay. Okay. Uh, and Melanie, we have damaged the table. Is that? And she's like, "Yes, that's going to be a problem because this place is rented. So, yes, that is an issue." Sorry. All right. Um. Well. Uh, is is let me is, know is it as uh, is it as big of an issue as uh, one of our instructors spending the entirety of the course that she was teaching on her cell phone and taking personal calls during? If you had allowed me to finish, I would have said that I'll go to bat for you guys about the table, and I will handle it. Okay? Thank you. Wonderful. Finally, um, this is uh, some field equipment that you may or may not be familiar with. I know you are junior agents. He He holds up a smartphone. These are our necronomophones. Necronomophones. Uh, and they have... I'm sorry, young lady, why are you laughing? I think it's a cute name. Uh, oh, it's, it's a wonderful name. I, I love it. Um, now, these Give phones, me an economophone, please. <laughs> these phones are equipped with a web browser, GPS, compass, a fairly good video camera, and a grimoire of spell apps that actually work. And this all operates on a marvelous 3G network. Um, oh, do you mean do you mean 5G? No, 3G. 3G. Oh, um, that's several Gs less than I thought. Yeah. Yes. 
Right, well, uh, I guess you should go to uh, the high command and ask them for some more money. And then maybe we'd get your amazing, super speedy 5G network online. Okay, thank right. you, but, I will. But um, we must be able to um, connect to local Wi-Fi so you can beef up the uh, connectivity speed. Of course right? it can, of course. Yeah. You just open, uh, let's see. Uh, settings. Settings, thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. settings. And then General. where do I go? General, General. thank you. Yes. yes. Yeah. And then um, Bluetooth. Usually. Bluetooth, right? Okay, Maybe. I've yeah. got it. And look at that. I'm on the Wi-Fi. Look at that. <laughs> That's okay. good. Um, all right. Well. So uh, these Necronomophones are equipped standard with a number of spell apps. There is a Ward app. A Ward app, of course, protects you from dangerous spells. Of course, this is a level one ward, so I wouldn't recommend trying to use it against a powerful sorcerer. There is also a banishment and exorcism app. Um, of course, it's a level one exorcism app, so, you know, uh, uh, level one thomic entities generally have a little bit of trouble possessing a hamster, but were a hamster to become possessed, the exorcism app on your Necronomophone would do the job to return its agency to that hamster. Oh, our phones, these are for us then. Uh, well, uh, actually no, I mean, they're just here for you to try out, but then all of a sudden, <coughs> the tannoy bursts on again and you hear, <coughs> emergency, <coughs> all agents, <coughs> recalled to London immediately, <coughs> all agents, recalled to London. Uh, and Melanie says, oh, um, I'll, I'll go check on that. And she runs out of the room. Uh, and uh, Wilfred's my name, by the way. Wilfred Maunder. Hello, Wilfred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for showing us everything, Doc. Oh, I'm not a doctor. Okay. <laughs> Neither am I. Right. Ah, uh, Melanie comes bursting back in. Okay, get your things. Uh, we are headed back to London in the new annex. Get, it, get this, everything. I'm sorry, does this mean that we've passed? Uh, no, 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 I should say not. I should say not, no. There are a couple courses left, um, but uh, I guess every agent is needed, all hands on deck, to the parking lot, and she runs out. <laughs> can we grab as much as uh Yeah, can we all get table? a phone? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna grab uh, a phone. Okay. Uh, grab, grab these items, these sweet, you sweet grab, items. You grab phones, You grab. there's a hog, for each of you, uh, well, actually, there are four hogs. Uh, well, two now, because some people have grabbed some. And then there are four phones. Great. So Take people grab hogs and phones? Yes, I'll, okay. have, I'll, I'll have an hog. Okay. So uh, you, uh, Jamie, Algernon, uh, you all run out to the parking lot where Melanie is getting into a very nice uh, sports uh, car and she says, your ride's over there. I'll meet you back in the city. And she peels out in her like Miata and you guys are traveling back to the city in a brown minibus that says uh, Crown Jewels Tours. <laughs> oh good, I'd love a road trip. So. Great. <laughs> Glad we get to go together. <laughs> Where's our cover? Um, a beautiful brown color, beautiful. And so, we cut to our next scene. You are in a briefing room. It's like a big conference room in the new annex, the headquarters of the laundry. There are like seven agents in there with you, uh, including Melanie. In fact, when you guys finally come in, she goes and points at her watch uh, because you get there after her. Um, we weren't driving and you left before us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, you're all in there and uh, people are wondering what the emergency could be when one of the higher ups comes in a big beefy bald guy with a mustache that you all know as Boris and, Bo <laughs> and Boris it's says Boris. we have situation potential attempt by politician to take control of country maybe take control of government maybe summon powerful being to take control for him. We not know. We make many speeches, uh, he make many speeches about big change needed now. 
Intel inform us big change has occult component and vector. We must treat as existential threat. Another political with God King delusion. Another wonderful day in the office for the laundry, eh? He became French at the end. (laughs) (laughs) I love him. He's so international. Yes, politician only recently came on our radar screen. We find he has occult allies, but they are nothing. Idiots. Politician is at home now and expected to go to parliament to execute plan. Uh, Alan Barnes and Artist Rifles are on deployment. Angleton is busy. We, this group, are everyone in range. Um, so, he's going to divide you into three teams. And he points at Melanie and three other oper- operatives. And she's, he goes, you are team A. You will head to parliament. Then he points at the other uh, three operatives who are not you and says, you are team B. Head to Morris's home. See if you can stop him from getting to parliament. And then he points to you four and Algernon. And he says, you are not even team C. You are not even team. You do not have your warrant cards. But you will um, uh, you will go to special operations room and uh, monitor and coordinate by watching the video there uh, to let us know what is happening at all times. Okay. We, we'd really prefer to be out in the field actually helping. Oh, I would prefer to not be trying to save the United Kingdom right now, but we don't get everything we want, do we, comrade? (laughs) You will go to special operations room, or I will knock you down another grade, and that grade will be lower than citizen of UK. You will become citizen of Russia. Oh, (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) <laughs> yes, Thank that you, sounds Boris. good. Sorry. Let's, let's, go to, let's go to special operations. I'm, I'm on my way. Yeah, fuck. Very good. <laughs> I suppose let's... we're on Overwatch then. Uh, all right. So while the action is going on, you guys find yourselves in the special operations room. This is actually a room used by the police. Um, it really exists. It's um, a place <laughs> where a lo- uh, there's a giant computer bank control center where all of the CCTVs all over the city can be watched. And you guys are stuck there watching uh, on various cameras. Uh, you go, oh, I think that's their car as like, you know, team team A's car heads out to uh, Nicholas Morris's house. And uh, you're like, oh, I think that's the that's the camera outside of London, uh, outside of Parliament right there. So you're just kind of watching and... Um, why doesn't everybody um, give me a mind awareness roll for one? Is this um, a natural awareness roll? Natural? Yeah, natural awareness. What does natural mean? I don't know, but I have a plus <laughs> one to it. I'm going to look at your sheet and see what the heck you're talking about. Because of my observant talent, I get a natural awareness plus one. Okay, and that means uh, that that means I, I think the natural just means. It, is that you, like a passive yeah, or? Think, it's just like you naturally get one. Uh, maybe it is passive, but regardless, oh, that is what it is. I think it's like passive, but okay. uh, regardless, go ahead and give yourself a plus one because. Woo-hoo. What's not? the difficulty again? Uh, four. Okay, I got yep. three successes. Two Same. successes. Three. Here. Okay, everybody. Everybody sees that um, uh, team, let's see. Everybody sees that team B that was headed out to Morris's home is too late because you see Nicholas Morris heading into parliament. Uh, oh, oh, we, sh- oh, we should let them know. Um, yeah, can we contact no, team A and let them know that he's slipped, slipped their team grasp? B? Absolutely, Bill. Why don't you go ahead and do that? Okay, great. Um, get on com- communications. It's like, um, Melanie, the um, the sparrow is um out of the coop. He's coming in to roost. Already here. Thank you, Bill. We're already on site and ready to handle it. I appreciate your support role. Uh, okay. Some, 
She really rubs it in, doesn't she? Really? I'm, so, and then I'm looking around. So all these cameras have that, some, that gorgonistic uh, basilisk ray attached to them then? That's what uh, they said. We... Worst case scenario, we could just use it on Morris. <laughs> you yes. are... I yes. suppose that yeah. is a contingency then, isn't it? You see Team A with Melanie all head up to the front entrance of Parliament, right right where Nicholas Morris just entered. Uh, and uh, you see them all flash their warrant cards at the uh, people out front. And suddenly, like, a bunch of police pour out of Parliament and start grappling and tackling team uh, team A to the ground. Oh! Oh, no. Oh, um, it's, brilliant. Uh, it's, 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 looking at the cameras, uh, do we do we see any goats in use anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> um, looking around, you see no goats. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Wait, that's theory. not true. <laughs> that's not true. There's a goat, like, uh, somewhere uh, 20 miles away uh, in a neighborhood um, that is nowhere near Parliament. Okay. Another. Oh, it's a petting zoo. Another, see, so we got camera feeds to uh, ten downing parliaments and a petting zoo. The among, London Zoo, uh, yes, among, of course. Among other locales. Um, well, this whole thing's All gone. High value targets. Gone upside down. Um, so. Well, what do we do from here? Um, well, there's team team B that went to Morris's home. Oh, yes, right. we should let them know. Okay. Um. um Mr. Barraclough, you're, you're good at, at speaking. Do the sparrow thing again. If you say yes. so. Um, right. Um, so, yeah, I get in touch with the folks at the uh, at his residence. This is B-Team. Um, B-Team, your, your sparrow's already coop-wise, and it looks like the, looks like the falconer who's going to bring him in has been pinched. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> um, the sparrow sorry, is thought, at Parliament, and there are police um, arresting um, this, us. The, the sparrow has migrated, but he's gone into some a, a retention pond wetlands we need the to we feed. Need to clip its wings and been, clip uh, the sparrow's wings. Are you telling me that Team A's been taken out? Yes, yes, that's it. <laughs> oh. Mate, it took forever to get over here. I mean, the traffic is going to be horrible. I mean, I'd say we're 40, 50 minutes out. Oh, no. This is horrible. Does that mean that, that Overwatch needs to be activated then and to go into, go into the field? Into the field? I'm horrified to say. It's up to you lot. All right. And then I Hello! turn to everyone. You lot, I think we just got promoted to Team C. And, um, and Algernon <laughs> puts his hand into the middle and goes... All right, team, let's get it together. All right, guys, yeah. I, team I think C. I, yes. Do we have to go? You'll be oh, fine. We get, we get to go. <laughs> yes, all right, let's go. So, if you're going to Parliament, I can tell you that there are three different routes you could take to get into Parliament, okay? Okay. There is the front entrance that you have just been monitoring, but as you saw, apparently showing a warrant card right now means you are tackled by police. It is heavily guarded, but that is an option. You also uh, know that there is a tunnel system beneath Whitehall, all right? It goes to 10 Downing and a lot of locations, uh, you know, in the government sector. Uh, and uh, you could use uh, that tunnel system to get into Parliament. There's a back way into Parliament through there. And finally, there is a uh, employee entrance to the halls of Parliament in the Westminster tube station um, that is used by employees. You could try there if you'd like. So, where are you going to go? Um, which one would be the fastest? Can I use my intuition to sort of intuit what would what would get us there the <laughs> fastest? Uh, this player has been wanting to use intuition the whole I have. game. Come on, what is intuition yes. good for? <laughs> intuition, what you good for? Intuit. please give me a spirit intuition for one for one. Woohoo! Okay, spirit two, intuition one. So that means I get three dice, right? <laughs> and that is one success. One success. For some reason, you feel like the 
Employee entrance in the Westminster tube station is calling you. Oh, um, I think we should use the tube. Uh, it, it's the least, um, it's the least likely that anyone would, would be monitoring it, right? It's just average. Uh, I, I'm, I'm dreadfully afraid of, 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 of Strangers, so don't yes. worry. <laughs> Large crowds. I don't, I don't know. I don't do the tube. You have to hold me. Well, we'll only be in there for for a while before we go into the entrance, and then if we run into anyone, it would be, in theory, an employee of Parliament. Maybe we'll run right into him. I think oh, we'll be God. fine. Yeah, right. Don't worry. I'll hold your hand. Yes, chin up. How far away and is? Uh, or we was the idea that we take the tube there or ride there? I think that you can take the tube there and get there fairly quickly. You're the closest people right now. Great. Yeah, i say the tube is fastest. Stop on the train. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, yeah, Abu, let us know if we're getting anything wrong, because the most important <laughs> oh, yeah. thing here is geographical accuracy. So where are we okay. trying to get to? We're trying to, <laughs> we're trying to get to the Westminster tube station from Great. the special operations room of the London police. Great. <laughs> Obviously. Okay. Um, so you uh, head to the Westminster tube station, and as you're heading there, Algernon is like, um, getting in could be tough. We should probably have a, a strong uh, cover story and, um, and and probably also maybe uh, uh, be prepared to hack some sort of security grid. Um, you know, they're going to have uh, cameras on us, probably electronic locks. Could be a variety of security measures. Well... Um, I have my laptop. Yeah. Right. right. I'm All sure right. there's no door. Clive's got his laptop. We should be good. <laughs> I mean, I when could, it comes to I getting could. through doors, we've got Clive's laptop for the for the electronics and my I shoulder. Can, if yes. things prove a little too persistent for that, exactly. And if we need I a can. cover, um, I, I'm a paramedic. Um, is that what they call them in the UK? <laughs> uh, uh, an EMT. Yes. You, you are from the UK. Uh, I will. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I can am, also of trigger the. Um, I can cause a distraction. I can set off the, uh, the water sprinklers. Uh, make people think that there is a fire. Um, it will give us a nice, nice distraction. Uh, what time is it, by the way? Is it is it e is it the evening or is it, it kind is of the, late? It is the afternoon. Okay, and if oh, what time though? Oh boy! How crowded! This feels like a trick question. Like you'll be like, "Well, if it's that time, then your Indeed. adventure can't happen the way you thought it did." <laughs> <laughs> so, can I ask you why you're asking? Because the UK is known for being dark at certain times, uh, very early. So, depending on the time and depending on the 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 you know the let's say the month. Uh, the sun sets very quick. It's a, it's a miserable fucking country. So yes. uh, <laughs> it's, um, it's right after lunch. Uh, oh, actually, okay, so. you know, we might be up to like three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. 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 Um, um, you arrive at Westminster Tube. Uh, we'll be and fine. you uh, quickly find where the employee entrance is. And you see uh, one gentleman in a tie and suit kind of uh, double timing it toward the entrance. Um... Uh, and yeah, he's walking up to the entrance. Do we recognize him as a member of parliament? Um, he is, n you don't recognize him as a member of parliament, no. He's he's not an older gentleman. Uh, he's not dressed to the nines. He's just in a suit. Um, and he and seems fairly young. Do we have a young. way to get in? Do we yeah. have a way to get in? Or do if we if need he's to going in, in I'd like to slip him. in behind him as he opens yeah. the door. Okay, so... Yeah. Um, he opens the door and he sees you and he goes, oh, excuse me. And he holds the door open for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Minor emergency. Paramedic team required. Hope it's all right Hello. if we come in the back way. Uh, sure. I'm, I'm a typist. Uh, <laughs> right. Congratulations. Um, all of you uh, get in. No problem. Because this guy just holds the door open for you. Awesome. Uh, he did have to. He did have to slide a card, but... When he saw you, he was like, oh, they must work here. Um, typical so, typical British politeness. <laughs> Funny. Yes. So, so when it works in our favor. You um, come up out of, uh, you know, the uh, the employee entrance. You, you walk up like a flight of stairs and suddenly you are in the halls of parliament. And I can tell you that the second you step into the hallway, you realize everything is fine here and you should probably leave. Oh, 
that's good. Hmm. All right. Algernon goes, well, everything's fine here. I guess we should go. And he starts to walk back down the stairs. No, no, right. no. We, 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 we just saw on the cameras that things are... You know, some, there's something must be afoot here. Something is afoot. And look and Now, look you're going to love eyes. this, Mary Lou. Uh, you can make a spirit intuition roll. Is this all of us? But let's this- actually have let's actually have Violet make it because Violet's the one that said, "Hold on, there's something wrong here." All right. Okay. Don't take this away from me. <laughs> so, what? Uh, what's the difficulty? The difficulty is four. Ooh. Three Eight, successes. Success. <gasps> Three successes. There is some sort of spell in operation here. And it's making you feel like nothing is wrong here and you should probably leave. Yeah. Well, uh, that's a wrap. Uh, there's, there's, Let's head back spell. out the way we came. No, hmm? no, 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 no. Listen to me right now. There, 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 there is a spell in operation and, and it must be disrupted and, and things are not as they seem. Remember what we saw on the cameras. Dear team, remember. Look, look with your special eyes. I specialize. Um, specialize. Specialize. Special eyes. Well, I can tell you that um, right now I need everybody to make a spirit resolve roll at 4 1, or they're going to try to leave, okay. or there might be another way to get around this spell's effect. Can I Can I help? Who do I know, since we've worked together, is the worst at this? And can I? I have a helpful talent where I can give them an, an extra die to their pool when I make the help action. Who's really bad at spirit resolve? I have no resolve and only two spirit. Give I would give it to her. That's that's your Okay. I, I will help. So then. all of us make a spirit roll. Mm-hmm. Spirit. Uh, so do you give me an extra resolve, die? Or- your training and resolve. So yeah, I got I got one success. Okay. I got great, two that's successes. Enough. That's enough. Do I still need to make the spirit resolve roll myself? No, not you. Okay. You're the one that Did figured it out. Was the difficulty four? That's right. Okay, then I got two successes. Great. Everybody is like, oh, we'll, we'll shake it up. Wait okay. a minute. Wait. Right, we came here for a reason. We got to rendition Why? that that that's MP. Um, but all spells have to have a physical component, don't they? Can I look around to see if there's anything that looks like it's strangely glowing or uh, any weird stuff that might be like the physical uh, component of this spell that we Make can Make like, a mind occult roll for me. Okay. And we'll call it 4-1. That's three successes, baby. Two yeah. sixes and a five. Oh. <laughs> the physical component for the spell might not necessarily need to be in this hallway. If it's a big um. enough and powerful enough spell grid, it could just be in the vicinity somewhere. Oh, all right. Okay. Shook it off. But I can't see anything here that that's Ooh. causing it. Let's f- let's find the source. Let's find the source. You are, are headed toward where? Um, well, we saw um, on the cameras, we saw the police tackle uh, team uh, A. Mm-hmm. So we would assume, right, that uh, Nicholas Morris is headed to the floor of the, or his office, to the floor of that, Parliament? The floor of Parliament sounds likely because, um, uh, you know, they were in session today. And yeah. Head right, head, there. head right there. Let's go. Um, you come around a corner, and there is a figure draped in a black robe, Uh-oh. hood down, yeah. hands making strange gestures in the oh. air. It's a judge, typical English judge. And <laughs> the figure says, Seek not to enter these halls, what? for fair England is saved here tonight. From the powers of darkness. Friends of England have no need to fear or intrude. Turn back in the name of Albion! (laughs) Cover his mouth. Um, (laughs) Yes, you walk up and you uh, cover his mouth and the hood comes off and it's a middle-aged guy with a ponytail. Uh, shush now, we don't need any of that. Uh, It was simply here to inquire on, on... What's happening on the floor? Pushes Violet off of him and pulls out a purple crystal and sort of shakes it at you like it's a switchblade. Easy, oh, easy. Can I, can I do um, a little occulty check to like figure out what he's doing? Yes, you may. 
mind occult. Yeah. I have forgotten knowledge in the occult. My training yes. dice are doubled. Nice. <clears throat> Wait, what what am I trying to roll here? Uh four one. Okay. Uh three. Three successes? Yes. This is some per- this is some quartz from a um shop that would probably sell gems and things like that. <laughs> So th- he doesn't have any sort of power? Doesn't seem to. Okay, cool. Great. Uh, let's not waste our time here. Uh, let's move on. Halt, young lady. I cannot yeah. allow you All right. to try to oh, alter no, the yeah, destiny gonna... of England. I try um, to get him in a in like a judo hold. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Give me uh, a... Uh, get, well, let's see. That's a melee roll. You're going to use body, uh, bo- body close combat... Um, he's poor. What is your um, what is your uh, melee level? Good. Good. Okay. Mm. So I think that he is. Oh, good is two steps above, if I'm not mm-hmm. mistaken. It is. Okay. Yeah. So you are two or more steps higher. Your difficulty number is two. Okay. Wow. Uh, uh, go ahead and roll. Five successes. <laughs> Um, oh he's wearing no armor, so you do five hits to his toughness, mm-hmm. and that means you uh, tell me what happens to him. But he's taken out. Okay, you just see you just see uh, like the Jason Bourne in Bill Baraclaw turn on, and a open handed chop disarms the quartz crystal, and then he rolls into the arm, grabbing him by the wrist, like uh, bracing him under one arm and just like dropping him to the ground um, with his arm just about to break. Um, And he's just pinned pinned him there. I'm sorry, I'll leave now. I'm sorry. What are you on about weaving this sort of thing around in here? What, what do you mean? Doing your witchcraft to Albion? Are you, are you are you casting spells? Are you one of those people who want to return Stonehenge to the druids? I'm a seer, an, an advisor to Morris. I I gave him knowledge of the occult, uh, uh, horrible secrets that he's using. He's on the floor. Sounds like we better hurry then, uh, darling. Yes. You're going to put ice on that shoulder, and then I'm going to give him a nice little pat and <laughs> and and keep going. Okay, great. Um, Coming around to the next hallway, you see it covered in scrawled sigils that look like they've been written in blood. Oh, dear. There are what look like Enochian letters and strange astrological um, configurations all written on the hall in blood. Oh, Bloody hell. Uh, no. Uh, do, do you want me to, to sort through this as you push ahead? Is, is there a way to know how to, like, um, I don't know, alter this or disrupt this? Why don't you give me a mind technology roll for oh. one? Mm. Technology. Okay. Three successes. Oh, yeah. The Necronomophone. Mm-hmm. It has a Word app on it. There we go. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we can just use our, our, our little phones. Oh, um, can you text me a ward? Yeah, well, we've... I think just we've got an airdrop, airdrop me the ward, we unless we've all it. got it on our phones. You've all got it. You've all right. got it. Can call I think it's oh, okay. called an app. app? Is that Cyber, just, what's Mr. The, uh, Rex, is that correct? What's the phone cover of this uh, Necronomophone made of? I think it's leather, but I can't place it. Oh, uh, yes. It's <laughs> such yeah, texture. It's, like, it's one, of those dad, uh, one of those dad covers that has like a wallet in it and flips right. and has a magnet. Yeah, it has, it has but it's places like, to put credit cards. It's strange sort of pale... Leather, yeah, yeah. yeah. very right. soft but strange. When you um, when you hit the Ward app, um, suddenly all these different like kind of circles and sigils and and uh, and uh, mini angled figures appear on, on the screen of your phone, and you feel a slight thrum go through your body, and Ugh. then you feel that there's just like a, a just a, a little skin of air around you that feels different. Well, I I hope these are level one. Wards, because I mean level one sigils, because this is only a level one ward. Algernon says, "But wait, I didn't grab one of those phones. It was only four. 
Okay, oh, well, no. goodbye, Algernon. <laughs> right, um, peace. You're going to leave me? Well, yeah, I'm I'm just, sure. just, just keep a watch. You're, you're good at watching because you're keep overwatch. A watch. Yeah, right. a watch. Watching. Right, Remember? okay. No problem. Just yell really loud if somebody's trying to come follow us. Or okay. just, or don't. Got it. And, just, and just, whatever, whatever you do, don't don't walk through this hallway. <laughs> I don't think it'd be good for you. Um. All right. Very good. Um. And so, are you going to cross the hallway now? Yes. I'm gonna stick okay. a toe in. <laughs> Sticking a toe in? Yeah. You feel nothing. Oh. I think it worked. Yeah. Let's go. Right. All right. Is everybody going? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. Everybody crosses the hallway, and now you finally come out into the large, uh, kind of open area that leads to some large double doors that lead into the floor of Parliament. Uh, and in front of those double doors is a man and a woman. They look like they might be in their fifties. Uh, they are wearing uh, the ceremonial robes of some sort of, uh, you know, Order of the Golden Dawn kind of occult uh, organization <laughs> uh, and uh, the woman says namaste you are welcome here if you bring peace and right. serenity uh, to this new uh, revolution uh, of England um, more of this lot is, is, um, is, is Morris just um, made um, contact with a bunch of bargain bin uh, new age crystal shop wizards the man says, hold on, did you just come through all those wards in the hallway? Well, yes, we did it, that. it was pretty easy. And nothing happened to you at all? Um, no. I mean, so so much happened. We, oh, we, right. yes, it's, we, we were blessed. Dangerous. It was dangerous, you say? Yes. All right, I told you it would work. <laughs> That was a real grim grimoire I was using. She goes, okay, all right. So I'm right for once. You can see, for once, I am right. My magic worked. And she's like, right, you be careful. You're going to disalign your chakras. Uh, okay. Oh, um, right. Now, you guys seem just lovely, but we have somewhere to go. So we'd like to pass, please. Oh, we can't let you do that. We were sold... To, told to keep everybody out of uh, the the floor. So, um, well, stand um, back. Sorry, sorry. I, I have to um, interrupt. You, you, you've already failed. How's that? What? Well, your dangerous wards aren't necessarily dangerous. I, if I were you, I'd probably go back and check them, because they're not they're not too dangerous. I mean, they're dangerous, but not very dangerous. You see. Because the we're wards, here. Well, yeah, because you got through them. Exactly. But you said that so, they were. But you, know, you said that they were at least challenging. I mean. Oh yes. We're, we're challenging. Yes, to a degree. Um, but then you understand right. how dangerous we are. Then. Linda, exactly. you deal with this lot. I'm gonna go strengthen the wards, and he runs to go work on his wards. While Linda says, "Just everybody be Team. at peace. Everybody be calm and breathe." Oh yes, let's let's close our eyes and do a breathing exercise. Breathe, yes. Do we uh, think it might be <clears throat> hog time? Yes. Hog time. Here we go. I'm gonna take out my hog and light it. Hog. Same. We all take so we'll out look our under, hogs. We'll look underneath it and essentially say the uh, the the magic word. Right. Yeah. All the Excalibur. words are like Excalibur, yeah. Pendragon. <laughs> uh, you know. Merlin, Arthur. <laughs> yeah, Arthur, yeah, and uh, whoosh, uh, your uh, hogs uh, ignite, and suddenly <laughs> she's like, "Very good, okay, just gonna wait for for Martin to come back." Let's slip right past her through the door. Yeah, let's just walk past that. You do so. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I like hogs. Palomides, yeah, the um, hogs, not too bad. <laughs> You enter the halls of parliament. It's full. All the MPs are there. Uh, and they all are sitting in their seats like this. <laughs> well, what are they looking at? At the front uh, of the room, Nicholas Morris is standing at his dispatch box. And he's like, 
Okay, I'm calling for a vote. Hello? Hello? And he's snapping at them. Uh, uh, but all of the MPs aren't saying anything. They're just kind of like, like this. Uh, and you see around Nicholas and around the room on the floor, there are strange circles uh, and uh, weird symbols made of light kind of stretching out on the floor mm. in all directions. And out of the dispatch box that Nicholas is standing in front of, there's smoke wafting up out of it. Huh. And he's like, it's, can anyone hear me at all? Anyone? So, uh, yeah. Uh, do I still have the black gloves or would I have disposed of them after I've used them to save Jamie? Oh, you'd still have the gloves. But so, I, I want to, uh, okay, yes. What would you like to do? Go ahead. Well, I guess because, you know, no one is paying attention to us, I'd kind of like to go over to the box. But if I see the smoke, I think I'd wrap, like I'd, I'd cover my, you know, my mouth in order to kind of, de de you know, defend myself from the smoke of smelling or smelling it too much. It makes total sense to go over there to the box. It looks like that that's where the action's at. Your gloves, I don't know how exactly they might help you with the fact that there are these like kind of lines and strange sigils all over the floor. Right, um, I you see. You might need to kind of like, you might try getting around them somehow. You have to let me know how. Um, okay. If there's lines and stuff on the floor, I'm going to use... I wonder. While you're thinking about that, Nicholas Morris suddenly looks at all of you and says, Oh, thank God you're here. I intoned the spell, but uh, they're not snapping out of it. They seem to be stuck in some sort of uh, uh, trance. And that's when Algernon Mainwaring <gasps> walks in, what? holding the basilisk cannon. Wait, it's what? And says, Algernon? Right. Uh, it looks like we've got something else to deal with first, though. In fact, their hogs should be running out of juice right about now and what? that is when the two minute time limit on your hogs <laughs> comes to an end God. and they they the, hog the never lasts as long as you out. need it to yeah God hog damn. doesn't last as long as you need it and he goes damn. there they are the fast and he hog. raises the basilisk camera at all of you and says everybody stand back traitor How'd am I learn? or did the organization betray me I'm a senior administrator. I've been a senior administrator for 10 years. I should be regional administrator by now. Sure. Stand back. Go over there. Sit down. Is that what this is all about, Mainwaring? You, you, you wanted to go from middle management to slightly higher than middle management? And Nicholas Morris goes, no, that is not what it's all about. We are trying. None of that matters. We are trying to get the country back on track. You know, there are so many people right now without jobs. This is going to create jobs. And Mainwaring is like, fine, whatever, as long as I get my promotion. What sort of entity have you made a pact with here? What the, what's going on? Um, and uh, I don't like having a gun put on me. I'm going to try to uh, rush him, get, disarm him. Great. Uh, oh, man. Here and, uh, we go. Seeing him do that, can I do a help action by doing some sort of distraction of just like fumbling with like pens in my pocket and like fall, like having them fall everywhere? Um, yeah, sure. That's a good. That's an interesting idea. Um, why don't you? Uh, how would you roll to distract? Um, well, I was hoping to just use my helpful talent. Oh, that's um, to give to give a to give a bonus die. Do a help action bonus die, yeah. Okay, so um, can you read your helpful talent to me, just so I make sure yes. we're doing it exactly as it works? When you make a capital H help action, which I don't know. Ah, so that is something of, something specific, right? Recipient of the aid gains an extra die to their pool. Yeah, I'm not sure what the help action is, but I'd like to take it. Yes. Okay. So let me look that up to make sure I know exactly what that actually means. Uh, so you're going to do that. What is uh, Rachel going to do? Well, 
I am going to, I wanna get closer to Nicholas Morris. And so I think I'm gonna use my dexterity to try and like jump over the lines and not touch any of the lines. Because incomplete pentacles means tentacles. I remember that one because <laughs> it rhymed. And um, just get closer to, to him at the box that he's at. So you're gonna try to get closer to the box and Nicholas, right? Yes. And you're aware of all this, the strange sigils and things on the ground. So yeah, are you I, trying to- I wanna uh, use my dexterity to like jump over, like hopscotch kind of. Excellent, you're going to do that in just a second. And I, I found the help action. So uh, when you take the help action, you assist an ally. The ally adds 1d6 to their dice pool for the next test they make, plus an additional 1d6 1d6 per level of training you have in the skill for the test. Alternatively, ah. alternatively, you can help your ally attack an enemy within close range of you. You distract, cajole, or taunt. This is what you're doing. The enemy needs some way to aid your ally. If your ally attacks the target before the start of your next turn, they add 1d6 to their dice pool for the attack. Okay, great. Uh, and then because of the talent, I guess they get an extra die? Sounds like an even a, 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 a two, a plus 2d6, awesome. okay? So um, his defense, uh, Main Waring's defense, is average. Okay. Your close combat is good, right? That's correct. Um, so that would mean that your uh, difficulty number is uh, three, if I'm not mistaken, for this attack. Okay. And then you're gonna add plus two die because uh, because Violet is distracting. Uh, uh, my him. pens, oh God, they're everywhere. So, so Violet starts to drop something. Main wearing Algernon, he turns the basil camera toward her and his finger is on the trigger. And, I, and I'm rolling body plus close combat plus the two die uh, added by the help. You got it. All right. And what is my uh, what is my threshold for success? Uh, well, I think uh, well because it's an attack. Uh, however many successes you get is how much damage you do. Great. And I'm sorry. What was the number to be? Three. three I think. Three. Great. Three. One, two. Three, three. That's four successes. Okay. Um, you uh, smash into Algernon, and uh, would you like to, instead of doing damage, get the camera away from him, or would you like to push him into the uh, sigils on the ground, or what would you like to do? I initially said I'd like to disarm him, and that's what I'd like to do. I would like to now have the, the Basilisk cannon. Okay, you, pu you pull the Basilisk camera out of his uh, hands, and he's like, oh, oh, no, oh, no, I, um, okay, um, Right. Stand down, main wearing. Meanwhile, it's very rude. Rachel is moving across the floor toward the dispatch <laughs> box. Rachel, give me a body athletics roll. Can it be dexterity instead? Uh, is that a skill, dexterity? Mm -hmm. Sure is. Okay, let me look. Let me look. Can it be? Will it be? Should I allow that? I um, think you should. No, of course you think I should, but I'm <laughs> going to see what it says in the book because guys, let's make this hard. I do um, like to push it. Okay. Um, uh, body athletics. Yeah, dexterity would be like doing things with your hands and you know, it's like Dang. finesse in Blades in the Dark, if you know what I mean, as opposed okay. to prowl. Got it. All right. Oh, and what's my threshold for success? Uh, I'm gonna say that it's a one. Four, one. I have to get one, Wait. four. Yeah, yeah. You, have you have to, to get four. Is four is your. Okay, it's, four, it's and I only four. need one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got and it. I got two. You got two, okay. <laughs> Um, Rachel uh, pirouettes and- I took ballet uh, in kindergarten. Yes, and jumps <laughs> over and is now standing beside Nicholas at the dispatch box. And Nicholas has just watched you pull the weapon away from uh, Algernon. So he's like, look, just uh, just, just help me fix this thing and we, we will forget about all of this, all right? I, I think I have enough vo votes. Oh, what, what, we will not what? be forgetting anything, but I will help you fix it. Um, and what is he talking about? <laughs> the dispatch box, which is like a big box that's where the you know parties make their speeches in front of, 
It, yeah. It's kind of open in front of you. And inside there is a, uh, a device that looks like the thing that was attached to the summoning grid back at the training session, but it's right. much bigger. And it has all these little micro computers all kind of cabled together. And they're oh. all kind of smoking right now. Oh, well, Jesus. um, I have one training in technology and in science. Mm. Well, these are computers and you're not sure you know how to uh, handle this. Um, uh, Clive, could you mm. maybe give me an assist? Absolutely. I kind of flip my phone and I start just typing madly. Um, are you texting it to me? <laughs> yeah, I'm texting it to you. <laughs> you're texting to her how to do this? Exactly. Okay. I'm socially um, awkward, man. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, give me, uh, let's see if you know how to do it. Give me a com mind computers. The difficulty is six, but you only need one success. So here's the thing. Does this technically count as like hacking or debugging? Or uh, like so what, do you have a talent? Yeah, I've got Codemaster. When programming, hacking, or debugging computer code, that, well, it's computer code specifically, the difficulty is reduced by one. I'm afraid not. This is okay. uh, just to tell you exactly what you're doing. Yeah. You're trying to turn off a stack of BBC microcomputers. Um, <laughs> uh, right now, the whole area smells kind of like the 1980s, and you are trying to kind of turn them off because the cabling has fused together and it's creating a horrible smell and that's why the spell isn't working the way it should. Okay, Wait, so then we, if I'm operating... The, yeah, go on. Do we want the spell to work? Well, the spell currently has every member of parliament in a trance. Is that something that you want? Well, no, we want oh, to break yeah, them out of the trance. Vote. Yeah, okay. we want to break them out of the trance, right? Well... Yes, he thought he had enough votes, but if we say, oh, we just broke you out of this trance and this man put you in it, don't vote for him, perhaps that will be convincing? I, I begin typing just... again. So what do I need to roll? <laughs> mind computers, difficulty six, complexity one. Okay, mind computers. Okay. When operating, what about tech savvy? When operating or, no, we're not repair. Yeah, I mean, this is like, is it electronic tech? Repairing tech? Yeah. yeah. Is it, what, yeah. Is, what is the talent? Read it to me. When tech savvy, when operating or repairing electronic tech, double the number of dice gained from training. So I get two, no, yes, I get two extra die. Okay. So, um, no, four extra die, sorry. Yes, so that's do. another seven. Great. Yeah. Whoa. Here we go. Well, it's seven altogether, I think, right? Mm, yeah, I got okay. two sixes. So two sixes, two so that's two successes. And I love this because this, <clears throat> really feels like an IT job. You're telling <laughs> Rachel how to do it. So you're like, no, then you have to, yeah. And then, it's the okay. working geek squad. I am help desk. I am generally help desk. So there you go. Have you blown uh, on so it? I, I do, I see, I see like a black wire. Is that yes, the one I yes. want? Yes, that's, okay. that's the one, that's the one. Okay. Not, uh, not the blue this is wire. A big, this is a big moment. So I would like for our friend uh, Clive to take the stage for a moment. And, and what do you tell her exactly? I'm like, so what you need to, and I'm typing and what you see, what you, what happens is as I'm typing it, you hear this really like deep sultry voice also reading out and it's like, you need to take the black wire Ooh. and cut it. As Ooh. you cut the black wire, okay. move on towards the blue wire. Yes. Make sure that I you will. avoid the red wire. Oh, Once you've yes. cut the blue wire, reconnect the red wire to where the black wire was cut. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, and now, <laughs> in order to do what he said, because he gave you the exact perfect, uh, correct instructions, uh -huh. I need a body dexterity <laughs> for, for oh, one yeah. test. <laughs> okay, I got this. Body two, dexterity one. <laughs> Okay, let's try it. That's three successes. Whoa! Oh. Rachel cuts, cuts the last wire. Suddenly, all the weird glowing sigils all over the room go whoosh and disappear in clouds of plasma. And suddenly, the room becomes very loud because all the members of parliament are like, what? Hey, what's happening here? What's going on? 
and that's the moment that Team B bursts into the room, and they run up to all of you, uh, and they're they're already picking Algernon up off the floor, and the leader of Team B says to says to Bill, "Sorry, we would have been here sooner, but it seemed like everything was fine, and we should leave." Duh. Uh, <laughs> didn't, um, didn't turn you on your board out, did you? you? <laughs> Um, and then I'm just trying to shout over the din. Nicholas Morris, you're under arrest due to the um, Civilian Eldritch Services Act of 1995. <laughs> um, hands uh, up, the, hands up. One of Team B says, what are you doing? No, we're not. Hmm? We don't just arrest anybody. Me. That's not, we're an intelligence service. Uh, she He's turns a tracer. To, she turns to uh, Parliament and she goes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there has been an IT malfunction in the room. Uh, the um, the device that um, ensures that we are not being spied upon by foreign powers has malfunctioned. So uh, Parliament is going to be adjourned until um, tomorrow. Um, and all of the uh, all of the politicians all go. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You wanna? Hey, should we go get dinner? And they're already uh, piling out of the room. Oh, great. Um, as for as for Mr. Morris, he doesn't. Sorry. I just did recommending the petting zoo. <laughs> Go ahead, Bill. What were you gonna say? Nothing. Uh, just, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So if we're not um, arresting anyone, perhaps um, if uh, Mr. Morris isn't looking so well, um, perhaps he needs a um, a sort of a medevac, as it were, by the paramedics. Right? <laughs> isn't, yeah. isn't, wasn't that our yeah. cover? Oh. Well, <laughs> Morris is yelling at the MPs who are leaving going, No! We called a vote! Come now! We have to finish this! What are you doing? Um, and uh, what would someone like to do to him? Because uh, maybe you can't arrest him, but... What right. I'd like to, to him? escort him, is maybe escort him closer to Bill, who's much stronger, and go, This way, darling, you're not feeling well. You're probably in shock. I've got some things. I've got a, like a tinfoil blanket for you. That will make you feel so much better. Um, come this way, darling. <laughs> yeah, and maybe I just try to uh, I look, make it look like I'm administering CPR, but actually I'm just punching him in the stomach. <laughs> 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 Easily confused. Bill's a hammer. Everything's everything. a nail. Uh, they're also this is walking. This is medicine. I mean, wrap around in a, you know. Uh, uh, team B is also walking Algernon out. Um, yes, and, I'm, mm. and I, that's where I'm like, he's a traitor. He's a he's a traitor. Um, and they're they're kind of like putting zip ties on his wrists, and he looks at you, uh, Clive, and he says, "You'll pay for this when I'm regional administrator." I'm the master of puppets! Uh, and they start to drag him away. <laughs> well, you should really all, try we're to all dream puppets. bigger, darling. We're all puppets. We're all avatars. <laughs> and so, you have saved <laughs> the UK from a vicious occult mind control plot. Your warrant cards are, of course, reissued to you. Ooh. But perhaps even more um, satisfying you are told you no longer have to take the rest of the retraining course. Excellent. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Hell no yeah. longer necessary. And you may now each give me a brief epilogue to your character, telling me what happens after this. Let's start with Rachel. Um. Well, Rachel Nuffield, um, she, she did not like the training. She rather enjoyed the... Um, you know, the more hands-on approach, but it did reignite her love for academia and uh, she went back to medical school and finally got her degree to be a doctor. Oh, excellent. A real doctor. And, uh, a real doctor. Of course, that, uh, that post at the laundry is still waiting for her if she'd like to come back. I always <laughs> love to come back as long as I can bring my dogs. <laughs> Very good. You know my dogs. I talk about them all the time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And so, uh, in the uh, medical and psychological uh, wing of the laundry, there is um, uh, a special dispensation given to Rachel Nuffield to bring her two dogs to work with her (laughs) each day. That is one of her rewards for saving the entire country. And they're Uh, both Bernese Mountain Dogs. (laughs) No. 
Wow. Uh, and your empl- your your fellow employees and coworkers resent it completely. <laughs> and I don't and notice. <laughs> complain about the dogs constantly, but in a British way where it's very passive aggressive. And, it, <laughs> and I don't notice. <laughs> Meanwhile, Violet Black Wolf, what is your epilogue? I return to, to my department where I'm much happier amongst the records and I go in and I make sure and edit all of Algernon's records to put him at the lowest grade and lowest <laughs> tier position in our uh, organization so that he gets stuck there and he is required to do at least uh, 40 hours of training courses before he can be considered for any next grade. Oh. Um and I, too, also finish my master's degree in evening classes. <laughs> Very good. I think that what happens is uh, when they are uh, giving him a review later, uh, Algernon, they're like, it says here that uh, seven years ago you fired on a fellow agent. And then down here it says that you lost evidence that led to a zombie uprising. And he's like, oh, I don't understand. None of this ever happened. Uh, but of course... <laughs> The records have been altered. Uh, and then uh, now we turn to our friend Clive X. Clive, mm. your epilogue, please. I think Clive <laughs> uh, returns to his very kind of simple apartment and all he asks, because, I mean, what I'm reading here from my character journey is the reason why I'm here is because my conspiracy blog was flagged by the laundry. So I imagine <laughs> that they... Uh, <laughs> stopped me from writing my own conspiracies. So I ask for almost immunity, online immunity to to voice my conspiracy theories and opinions <laughs> on Twitter specifically uh, uh, about how we are avatars and are all in what is they called the matrix. And what ends up essentially happening is uh, I end up getting hired to write the new matrix film. And uh, <laughs> I end up also directing it too and become incredibly successful. Um, it is quite a story. That is amazing. <laughs> here's, here's what I would say. Um, two, two of the higher ups are discussing Clive and they're like, he wants to be allowed to continue his blog. Um, he's <laughs> upset that we made him stop. Uh, and then the, uh, the a boss of that guy is like, well, is there any damaging information in it? Anything that would lead them to the secret truth about the universe? And the other guy goes, oh, no, absolutely not. I mean, it's all hogwash. And they go, well, then let him do it. Um, but it is so, very exciting. <laughs> right. And then we cut to Clive and Keanu Reeves hanging out. And <laughs> Keanu is like, Clive, I'd love for you to come to my ranch and ride on my horses. I would like that, Keanu. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> Bill Balaclaw. Bill Baraclaw. Um, Baraclaw. Yeah, goes back to... <laughs> Bill Baraclaw. <laughs> battle, battle clag. Uh, goes... <laughs> goes back to his regiment um he's he's loaned out from the army for these sorts of support jobs and um mm. and occasionally goes and, and moonlights at the laundry um and just see him just kind of slowly and diligently climbing that governmental ladder um but also at night um on a, on a night when he can get away a small uh pub not even a club uh in the back room like lights going and a, and a laptop seated on top of a little stand on a, and a couple of books with a DJ software going and you're just hearing drum and bass like stand up right and then and then suddenly and then suddenly all the music just goes to never gonna give you up never gonna say good. as my as his uh, DJ software fills with pop-ups all with Clive's face in them just going ha, 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 ha. Uh, the end um, thank you yeah. Mary Lou oh. Josephine Abu and Ross that was another case file of The Laundry, the new tabletop role-playing game being kickstarted right now by Cubicle 7 Games. You can go to the link here in the chat if you're watching live. 
you can go, if you're watching later, the, the, in the description, there should be a link. Go, donate to the Kickstarter. It's going on till May 1st um, and get this game or yourself. Um, and I really highly recommend checking out the world, checking out Charles Strauss's novels. I should mention Charles Strauss actually helped to punch up the adventure that we played today a little bit. Oh, so cool. I, oh, cool. hope, nice. I, I hope I did justice to the little moments that were worked into this adventure. Um, you know, I, I will just also say, you know, the game can be played more for horror or it can be played a little bit more to the comedy end of things like we did today. Uh, but uh, it's really just a very rich and uh, exciting and fun setting. So go out, donate to the Kickstarter, check out the game. This has been the Friends of the Pod, the Laundry. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you back here on the Glass Cannon Network very soon. Bye. Cheerio. Rewind. Rewind. <laughs>